Alrighty. Here is your recap. I will make uh, Collective Confusion here the uh, top line. So go ahead and pause. And pause. That is your recap. Good morning, YouTube. Are we on the Good internet? Morning, YouTube. Yes, we are. So, I know that Gregory has made the recording able to see the recap. Has everyone finished reading the recap? I'm almost done reading the recap. I still remember. You what? Yeah, we did. I, I still remember from last I session. My memory of these things is very good. <laughs> very good. I'm going to be using some new dice today, gang. Let's see if they're kind to me. <laughs> One of these days I'll make that vampire warlock. <laughs> Still wild that that's what I got on that. Oh. What the fuck is that cable? <laughs> I stay determined that was a lie. <laughs> Hey, um, you know what's really helpful, gang, in general? Yeah. Starting. Having your um your your character sheet in your hands. Yeah, or you know, on a screen. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that is helpful is dice. Did you forget your dice? No, I have my dice, but somebody usually always forgets their dice. <laughs> mm, true. I actually had mine ready today. Yeah, I kept mine on this side. Because I know I'd be using them more often now. I have my new fancy prismatic glass one. Oh, oh you got some of those? Them. Yeah, Gregory got them How for me. I didn't get any. That's awesome. You need to get a... Well, they're so pretty, but the ink is gold. Like, <laughs> reflective gold. It's going to be so, so hard to see. You, it, 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 and it because they're glass, you could see all the numbers from all the other sides <laughs> oh, no. through the glass. So they're very hard to read. <laughs> I have to pick it up to determine what number it is, which is fine when yeah. nobody's watching me roll my dice. But if I were to sit at a table and use them, it would look like cheating every time. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a door squeak upstairs. Is that Gregory stepping away? Uh, it's Gregory stepping back. I very suddenly had to pee, oh. but I'm good now. Okay. Good on you. Has my uh, uh, Ashley Burris finished reading? I'm going to investigate the school basement tonight. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. I believe. Do... Yes. Okay. So, hmm. You uh, got back to the hotel, opened a book, and all of the ink sort of blistered off the page as dust. Just sort of scattered shit. on the floor. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was... Um, that we kind of rushed through it, so I'm assuming you all stopped and dropped off your stuff so you didn't set off the alarms, and so all your shit yeah. has been stowed at the front desk, and you all are up in your room. And you've got several hours, so as players, you get to decide, is there something in particular you want to do during this several hours? Do we just want to eat up the clock? What do you want to do? Who's eating clocks? We're eating clocks. I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> Speed up clocks. Snaps is probably going to be fucking around with her little uh, herbalism kit and starting to try to make a salve for Dusk little little antler buds. Yep. Just start playing with it. Mm -hmm. Killing time. Yeah, because I don't really think there's. Um... 
unless we want to go do something. Um, Maya is probably still seething and like and ready, to, ready kill to kill something. Dusk is going to um, offer up that he's going to go check in on Wine Drinker and Jezebel and make sure all their needs have been tended to in the meantime and the way to clear that clear the head if anyone cool. wants to come with I'll walk with you right right and there i mean it's a lovely stroll across the entire length of the town <laughs> It'll probably take you a good uh, hour and a half to get back to the hotel after you visit with the horses. You will find that the horses have been very well cared for. Uh, Wine Drinker currently has a bucket with about three inches left in the bottom of what appears to be the dregs of several wines. Mm. Uh, so every that's... time there's a little bit left in a bottle, they're dumping it in her bucket. And... <laughs> Wine drinker is very upset that they're not being given supreme wine, clearly. <laughs> uh, D Dusk would just sort of, you know, pat their necks and their manes and just sort of lean into his beast and leaf, uh, speech of beast and leaf, and just just say, you're, you're all right, girls. We're treating you well while we're off doing business. Stamp once if yes. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of that horsey head shake thing that happens. That's right. And when you tell them to stamp, they stamp. All right, good, 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 good. All right, we sure will have to tip them for their service. Ah, uh, well, Jeb well, we're over here. lowers her head and and uh, nudge, nudges an apple across the hay on the ground. Toward your feet. Oh, is that for me? He stamps her foot. All right, excellent. He'll pick up the apple and just shine it on his his uh, soft part of his armor, and you wear some cloth and robe, and just look at it. Is it edible? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, just Perfectly fine, aside from having rolled around on the floor of a barn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just uh, wipe it off and take a bite. Perfectly serviceable apple. Hmm. Thank you kindly. While we're over here, uh, maybe we should check out what the locals have to say about maybe what they know about this place. You know, the academy. Helps to not have your microphone muted when you respond to someone's comment, huh? Um, yeah, yeah, really. yeah, I'd be, um, I'd be down to poke my head into a couple places and Ask yes. around a little bit, see if anybody has any other weird opinions about weird things they've seen. Yeah, let's go shake some bushes. See what yeah. see what rouses it. I like the idea so. of shaking bushes. All right, so we can play that out, or let someone else have a turn here. <laughs> <laughs> anybody else want to be doing anything else, or do we just continue with the gentleman <laughs> at the south end of town? We can come back to the hotel. Sorry, you wanted to do something back at the hotel? We can do the hotel later. Okay. So okay. Uh, it looks like Aste is typing something instead of talking. Oh, it might be in response to the bush tugging that's going on. What is going on with the Jason. bushes? And they're shaking the bushes. Shaking of bushes. Oh, they're shaking the bushes. Okay. Okay. Well, there's, that's what they're doing. <laughs> let, me, let me give you the context for that, YouTube. Sorry. They're doing some bush shaking. Oh. <laughs> Okie dokie. All right. So, uh, I'm assuming you're just going to go around the barn and enter the tavern. Yeah. The um, ship yard people tend to yeah have see what kind of locals there are about 
So I think you guys went to the gallery pretty early in the day. So I'm going to say you're there at the tavern at the end of the lunch rush. Sure. Um, what are you going to do? There's a, 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 you know, a dwindling crowd still there eating their lunch. Looking for anyone in particular? I'd say if there's anybody still sort of nursing a drink at the bar, that, you know, perhaps a local, maybe not, not somebody who's passing, doesn't look like they're passing through. <laughs> Uh, sure. Uh, there is a dude sitting alone at the bar on a stool. Um, he's not exactly nursing a drink as much as chasing the last few bites of food around on his plate. Um, he's got an apron on with little bits of flour here and there. Um, little white dust in his hair. Uh, and it looks like he's just, you know, lackadaisical about finishing his meal. All right. You want to open this one, Foggy, or should I? As I nod my head over to that gentleman, maybe, maybe he might know a thing or two. Foggy. Or it's a Foggy. Foggy, you're going catatonic on me. Sorry. I received, a, I received a text message and it was minorly important. Um, mm -hmm. I do need you to repeat what you said then, because I was reading. I just, I I kind of nod my head over to that gentleman over there on the bar and just say, "You, you want to open up, uh, you know, the conversation, or should I?" Uh, I was actually going to go for a split prong approach. If you handle him, I'll handle someone else. All right, I'd uh, head up to the bar and just sort of sidle up in the next seat and just uh, say, "Oh, afternoon, friend." Oh, well, afternoon, sir. How how are you? Oh, I'm I'm grand. I'm grand. I'm just passing through. Traveling cleric of the goddess Saluna, blessings of Saluna on you and yours. Oh well, well, thanks. Uh, we could we could use some blessings these days. Thanks. Yes, sometimes we live in yes. Yeah, yeah. You could you could say that. Yeah, so, I think. I, you know, I, I I I like to keep tabs on what's going on around these wherever I go. Is uh, heard anything weird? Anything anything that somebody. Could look into troubling the townsfolk of this fair place. Well, I know um, I did. They, we just got word this morning that they had a cave down uh, up at the, um, the at the mines. Um, cave down at the mine. Cave down the Hippoly mines. There, I don't know if you're just passing through. You may not be familiar with the area. And he points sort of northeasterly, and he says they're quite a ways. Several days uh, north, and then even further north of the trade road. Uh, it's the bottom end of the mountains on that east coast. Um, but really? I, I, I heard there was a, a, a cave in. They called it a cave down, though. There was something about tunneling. There's some people got hurt. Uh, they broke through some kind of natural cavern underneath, uh, full of mushroom-looking things, and... Um, some folks that fell down in there, they got sick real fast last I heard and, uh, you know, lost consciousness from the whatever was down there. But they got them out. As far as I know, nobody died. But there's a little stress about that. So there's a, you know, a couple of guys are getting on boats. They're going to head up there uh, with a healer or two instead of the normal trip just to go pick up, you know, the stuff that comes out of the mine. They're Sending some folks up there to help out, Mrs. Hippoly. She's she's um she's a nice lady. Uh, she cares for her people and she wants to make sure everybody's okay. You know, so she's sending some folks up there. <laughs> like if if uh, Dusk is like taking a swig of a a drink as he's telling the story, he's just gonna like choke on it. Like, <laughs> oh god, really? Wow, that's more than I bargained for. That's quite the story. <clears throat> yeah, I just heard it this morning. I thought uh, from some guys that came in to get some. Uh, Biscuits and uh, muffins for the, the their crew. <laughs> they were loading the the boats. Yeah, I I, I was surprised. I, I you know I've never heard of anything going wrong at the mines. Uh, well, uh, this is dirty business. Yeah. It's uh, dangerous without anything yeah. strange going on. Yeah, 
Yeah. I know a thing or two about caves. <laughs> he just says wistfully. Yeah. Looking <laughs> off in the distance. Looking off in the distance. I'm trying to remember the name of the mountains in question. The Calamite? No, the Hunting's Pain. No, hunting Pain, uh, that's Spain's, what it is. Yeah. It's the oh, Hunting Pain. Uh, out hunting. there, there's like north of the trade road, and then you got this big forest, farmy something. And then there's the Hippoly Mines are at the bottom end of the Hunting Spain Mountains. On the water side, you know. I I seem yeah, to recall yeah. that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I'm a little new in the area in the Usiteria Us here. They're uh, somewhat new, still traveling around, getting my bearings. And I've heard of those mountains. Yeah, yeah. And uh, suddenly the guy kind of twitches and he like brushes his hand off on his apron. A cloud of flour goes flying. He's, I'm so sorry. How rude of me. And he holds out his hand. I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, and introduces himself, although his name escapes me at the moment. Do you happen to remember it, Snaps? Um, the bar? No, I don't remember the bartender guy. Not the bartender. He's the baker. Oh. The baker. I don't know if I got a name because. Oh shit! Yeah, not off the top of my head. Oh, I'm looking. Do, do, I don't do, think do, I wrote do, it down. Do. Where? Rumors. I just wrote rumors. Lost up. I don't have the name. Unfortunate. Marcus. 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 I'm Marcus. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to be so rude. Uh, hi, I'm Marcus. Oh, Marcus. Uh, dusk. Just cart fire. Uh, well, it's, it's nice to meet you. So you're just passing through, you say? Well, yeah, I spent some time in Dybrook, and I've done sort of doing a little bit of a jaunt around the tradeway here. So I've been up all the way up to Drakeit, and, you know, almost a stone's throw from the hunting Bane Mountains, it would seem, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the trade goes right by there. You were probably only a day away from the mines if you yeah. stayed, if you were on the trade road all the way around. Yeah, that sounds right. Right, you are. You know, if yeah. I were to go back that way, but uh, that's a that's a haul from here. Right? That's like a. Oof. Well, that's well, terrible news, a, though. It's just a day or two in a boat. The, the what a boat? Oh, do you take boats up to the mines? Is that how it goes? Well, yeah, that's how that's how they get all the material down oh. here, and then it gets redistributed on boats and sent off to different places around the world. I hear you. So, so, so Okay, gotcha. So they're sending up a, a group up to those mines to investigate what's going on. And Yeah, uh, they're sending some healers up there, and then they'll bring back the cargo healers. like they usually do. Yeah, healers. Yeah. healers, yes. That's something I could definitely do, too, as well. <laughs> Chuckles to himself. <laughs> uh, man. So how about that local academy? Oh, the uh, my wife worked there actually. Uh, Your wife worked there, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's one of the teachers up there. She she what? teaches mostly. She focuses on like artwork with um, brushes and different kinds of paint and stuff. Oh, when's the last time you heard from your wife? Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Have we had breakfast this morning. <laughs> okay, just sorry. Of course, I have it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we had breakfast this morning. Okay, that's good. Good to know. Just say it. You got it. You never know. When you kiss him goodbye, you never know. Okay. Sorry, that's really done. I'm just, you know. She's a Gosh, teacher. I mean, referencing it she teaches bit, children. Dun, dun, There's dun. not a lot of risk in the job. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's a teacher. She, yeah, mm, art. Mm -hmm. Art. And what does she think of the academy? So she works there. That's crazy. Yep, she's one of the teachers. She's 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 only been there about I don't know year year and a half. Not yeah. not terribly long time. She, so she, um, you know she, she liked teaches? it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I mean, I mean she's I don't know. She's been weird lately, but you know she likes the kids a lot. She says the kids oh, wow. are great, and they're all very talented children. I see, I see. But she's, Why, what do you, you mean know, weird? She's, What's, uh, she's been weird? Well, you know how women can be. They worry. <laughs> well, a bit of a bachelor myself, so, you know, I don't. 
Uh, but <laughs> so I hear. You know, they they worry for all kinds of things, and and you know, I I think she's a little maybe a little too attached to the kids. But she, you know, she says there's something wrong, and that you know they're they're not. What did she say? Not shiny or no? I I will uh not. Something about passion, and I'm I bake. I, my passion is baking. I understand baking. Art, I don't get it. So I, I don't know what what the passion thing is all about when it comes to drawing a picture. You know. Well, you know, when you lay eyes on a delicious warm bun, I mean that can move you to tears as good as any piece of artwork. Really? Well, I mean, maybe it you know, depends on the person. I really like. I get. I, I guess it depends on the person, sir. Yeah, he just sort of <laughs> pats his stomach. He's like, I might like them a bit too much, perhaps. But to each their own. <laughs> um, you know, there. Okay, 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 okay. You know, there is a little something that warms my heart when the rise has gone well. That there is yeah. a little something there when it doubles in size and it just. So full of air, and you touch it, and it. Yeah, okay. I okay. Yeah, I can see that. Now you can't tell I me that's if, not magic. I guess if my bread wasn't rising the way it used to, maybe I would worry about something. I guess maybe I should listen to her a little more closely, huh? Well, <laughs> I suppose you know there's something to be said about artistry and your work, even if it is baking. There, it's. I know I couldn't probably do what you do, and I can't paint like those, you know, students up there. And but you know, sometimes things get a little carried away, right? You get a little too into things. You know what I mean? You ever been you like too lose track of time? Over? Yeah, you get yeah. lose track of time. You maybe over knead the dough. You end up with a tough loaf. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe accidentally uh, enchant your uh, works with things. Anything? What do you mean? I don't know. Just I've heard rumors. If I'm not, I'm gonna be truthful with you. Um. Okay. I've heard rumors that there, there, there's something hinky uh, with some of the not the students. The students are grand, you know, but something about. The way the academy showcases those works doesn't seem all on the up and up. That's just what I heard. You talking about the gallery, Mister? Oh well, I suppose yeah, that would make sense. That's where a gallery is a place where you show things, right? Well, yeah, they put the kids' artwork on display in there and sell it to those rich folks that come in north end of town. To and they they sell them to the rich folk and they just eat it all up, right? Almost like your buns. What those same rich folk do very much enjoy my baking, and they pay quite a premium for it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Huh. What's it? And I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name of your wife. Emirio. Emirio. Yeah. And she paints. She's painting. She teaches yes, painting. Think, yeah. Yes, that, that's a that's a beautiful name. I should remember something. Well, and and uh, it was a pleasure talking. It was great to have a shared drink and uh, just gonna lay the land here. And yeah, I gotta get going. I, I, I got some bread in the oven. I gotta go. It was oh, yeah, very yeah, nice yeah. to meet you, sir. And oh. if you're if you're shopping, just follow your nose. Smelling fresh bread in the morning. There's two bakeries in town. Mine on this end, and there's another one on the other end. Mine is better, just saying. And he gets I, up from his chair and starts walking out the door. I'm sure your buns are way better. Um, I yeah, they yeah, I got good <laughs> buns, sir. And <laughs> walks out the door. Oh, how I wish Foggy had been with him for that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Foggy would have been examining the buns of Marcus as he walked out the door. All right. Yeah. So what's Foggy up to while I'm 
having this great old conversation. Yeah, I was gonna specifically try to look for. Uh, uh, I was gonna <laughs> attempt at least to look for an older individual, uh, someone who is clearly a lived-in individual who's lived here a long time. I'm gonna say that you could find somebody in a back corner sitting at a table all by himself with more white hair than white hair ought to happen, a beard down to his belly, uh, skin and bones, little old guy. You could tell he was once very muscular and now he's just kind of waning in his old age. Uh, weathered skin, you could tell by the deep, deep wrinkles that this person has spent way too much time in the sun in their youth. All right. Uh, were you talking <laughs> human or elven? Human. Human, okay. So I'll approach. Gotta be, yeah, gotta be 75, 80 years old. And just gotcha. as wrinkled as wrinkled can be. Gotcha. Afternoon, stranger. Sit, a, sit across oh. from him. Oh, well, sure, you're welcome to join me, young man. Uh, um, um, name's Birdie. Hi, name's Soggy. And, and he's holding there. a hand out. <laughs> yeah, I, I immediately reach out and, and shake the hand. Um, well, what have you been... Uh, welcome, you been... sit down. You, you, you yeah. need a beverage? No, I was going to offer you the same thing. Oh, I got my tea here. I'm good. Is it I could get you empty? a tea. And he starts, he starts waving for somebody to bring you a tea. <laughs> All right. I will, I will graciously accept him... Uh, Ordering me a tea, and I will I will preemptively pull a gold coin out to pay for it, regardless of the price. Oh, you youngster, aren't you sweet? No, they won't take your money if you're at my table. Oh, and why is that? And I put the coin back. Well, because it's my place. Ah, I had a, f you know, I had a feeling. Just based on the graciousness of me having sat down without being, inter uh, without being invited, that... Yeah, you seem like the kind of person. Well, it is a very nice place. Thanks. You know, we we try to keep it tidy. Uh, uh, family owned, passed down, or did you build this place? Oh, I kind of, kind of acquired it when the old, you know, he died and he didn't have no family. I just sort of took over because that makes sense. my old body couldn't do the docks no more. I couldn't do the lift and the carry and the tote anymore. I just couldn't do it. That's fair. So I just sort of took over when the old buddy died. I, I apologize for reopening the old wound, but I definitely am of the opinion that you've done well. This is a very nice place. It's, you know, a little dirt on the floor never hurt nobody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, here's your tea. And oh, young man you. comes and puts down a cup of tea. I, I take a swig. Is it is it at least passable tea? It's lovely hot tea. Wonderful. A little bit flowery, but mostly just, you know, All right. Lady Grey, you know. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll sip and savor it a little bit and, and attempt to be as respectful as possible to it. Hmm. Very good. Uh, how long have or, uh, Sorry, you first. I, I was just asking you passing through town. You you look a little um, a little um, different. No. Well, you know, armed. You look armed, sir. Oh well, yeah, that that is definitely true. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm part of a, a a wandering band of individuals who are. Rather fit and strong, and we do what we can to help people who can't help themselves. Well, that seems like a laudable goal, young man. Well, where, you know. where's, where's the rest of this, this, this band of yours? Uh, well, one of them's over there by the bar. Uh, the big guy with the, the fancy armor and the scraggly hair. Oh, I see it. Yeah, he's still over there talking. No, good old Marcus. Marcus is a good boy. Yeah, he really I was. I, was I believe I was at his bakery earlier, and he. Uh, was I at his bakery earlier, or am I mistaken? I don't know if you were at a bakery, sir. That did, was the. Did you that get was baked the, goods? That was, the, was it that the, was the best player, baked goods ever? That I don't have any idea. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have no <laughs> recollection. No, I was at the chocolatier. The Never mind. He wouldn't have said that because yeah, I was at cool. the chocolatier, not the bakery. Yeah. Great. All right. Good. Yeah, um, Marcus is a good boy. 
Yeah, he um, he seems like it. Him and, and his little wife, they're a... very sweet. They're they're he very sweet. They sometimes bring me biscuits. All right. Very good. Um, how long have you and your uh people lived here? And by your people, I mean your your family. Assuming you have family, I just realized I might be opening another wound. I'm very good. Oh, at this. I was I was, I was born here. Uh, oh, my okay. family's. Oh, no, I'd say my family comes from from um like Aldersgate kind of places, but okay. but I I I was born here right. when it was just the tiniest of place, and the 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 academy was still real new, and we didn't we didn't even have the Cerulean view wasn't even built yet. It was we was the only place in town to get a room. It was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. My, the rest of my gang are up at the uh, up at the Cerulean right now because it's the side of town yeah, we entered on. It, it's pretty fancy up there. Yeah. And, you know, I, they make a know. good turn. They they make a good buck and, and they, they keep the the, uh, the tourist ones happy. And many, many, many of my, my customers is, you know, supported by them tourists. So it all works out good. Speaking of that, uh, that academy, uh, I was down at the um, the gallery earlier, and that's all student work, right? Yep, yep, that's why I understand it. Yeah. The the kids there, they they bring kids in from all over the whole world, and sometimes they can't afford to go to school, and so they make stuff and they sell it there in that gallery to those rich people hanging out at the Cerulean View. Mm -hmm. And uh, it helps pay for their room and their food and, you know, what Got they need it. to live on while okay. they're there at the school. Yeah. Fantastic. It's a really good deal for the kids. They get an education and, you know, they get to practice being artists. And some of the stuff I've been in that gallery a couple of times, some of that stuff is just beautiful. Brings you and, to tears. It's so yeah, beautiful. and like I, that's exactly what I was going to say. Is it's it's all incredibly moving pieces. Yeah, yeah. I, there's there's one in there a couple of weeks back. It was it's gone now, but it was this this round thing like a ball on a stick, but it wasn't really attached to the stick. It just it looked like it was floating on the stick, but I think it's because it was made of glass. And there was all these colors in it, and it it just sort of sat there on that pedestal, and I couldn't rip my eyes from it. It was just so beautiful. And every moment that I looked into it, all I could think of was how so very much I wished I had had children when I was younger. Mm. Like, like I wanted to know what it was like to be a dad, I, you know? I don't know what this little ball made, why it made me feel that way, but I felt almost a little bit um, like a, a little regret. Just looking at this ball made me feel like, like I, I should have had kids, you know? It's yeah. wild what art can make you do, what, oh, yeah. what it can make you think. Yeah. I, I it's saw, wild. I saw a little, I believe what I saw was a little, a little carved thing that just made me miss home. And it was, it was a simple carving that didn't really feel like it had much significance to me, but I just... It was a big old tapestry on the wall. Oh. Didn't you have the big old tapestry yeah, of a jungle might, on the wall? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 And it was all gratitude. You felt all the gratitude. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. I might yep, that's yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I uh I clearly am You were remembering that. dust carving, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. So uh gratitude, huh? Just just by looking at well, you know, I guess we all ought to be a little more having more gratitude about the, the nature of the world and oh yeah and how nature provides for us, you know? Yeah, I uh I well, especially I mean, I just mentioned to you that we we go out of our way to get ourselves into fights to to help protect people who can't protect themselves. Uh, Lord knows I'm lucky to still be alive at this point in my life. And he's just gaped a little bit, like astonished that you've 
acknowledged that you risk your life regularly to take care of other strangers. And uh, you can see a, a bit of, um, he's impressed by you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a risky business, but if, if I don't do it, then, well, if, if me and my people don't do it, and occasionally other groups don't step up and do that kind of thing, you know, there's only so much ev anybody can do, so those who are able step up when they can, and that's what we do. Yeah. Well, that's, that's an impressive, impressive choice of life, son. Thank it you. really is. Well, you know. And he gestures to the roof over his head. Providing a place for people to sleep isn't exactly, you know, self selfish. You oh, that ain't my choice of life. Short. That's just where I landed in my old, in no. my young, in my choice of life. It was all about the boozing and the brawling and the lifting and toting on the docks. Mm. I was a bit of a wild one, I tell you. Well, you've ended up... And he gestures upwards. You've ended up in a damn good place. So clearly you made some of the right choices along the way. I guess so. Yeah. It's comfy. And the tea's good. The tea is very good. And I take another sip. <laughs> do you, um, do you have any kind of, uh, other than knowing, and then he gestures to the baker at the bar, other than knowing, uh, his wife, who I think you mentioned works there? Yeah, his wife, she's a teacher. She she teaches yeah. them kids. She she um, helps the ones that paint. Gotcha. Okay. Uh do you know any of the you wouldn't happen to know any of the students? Well, no, they don't generally come off campus. Gotcha. Okay. They 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 yeah, they're they're kinda protective of the kids up there. They don't like people to mess with the kids. So they gotcha. As, you know, they're away from their families and their moms and dads, and they just sort of keep them in the campus to keep them safe, which gotcha. I think that's a great idea. I, I, I had a friend who um has a kid who's at the uh, academy and was wanting to do a check-in, and I hadn't had the opportunity to actually go to the academy itself yet. Um, so I was mm. wondering if you would have happened to know somebody and if you knew somebody i could then get a general update of the inside and not even have to go into the academy because schools aren't exactly the place for a person who looks as heavily armed as me but um <laughs> yeah yeah i guess that might be an issue well we'll figure it out in the morning all right well you well, can talk um, to marcus over there and and maybe he he and and his wife could you know uh come meet you back here at dinner time she could talk to you about the students if you don't want to go to the school uh, she she might know the kid you're looking for. If I know Dusk, and he points to the cowman. If I know Dusk, that's yeah. probably what he's already suggesting. Cowman. Oh, the cowman cow over there. That's great. Yeah, Mr. Cowman. Okay. Hmm. Well, that yeah, that, that you know, if you didn't want to go to the school, but you want to check up on a kid, that's probably the best way to go is talk to one of them teachers. All right. Well, and like like I said, <laughs> Marcus and his girl, they're they're very sweet. All right, well, I'll probably touch bases with Dusk here before uh, me and him decide to head out before he's done with that conversation. But uh, I'm so sorry. Did I even actually ask you your name? Sorry, I'm a little... Oh, they... Uh, it's Birdie. Birdie, yes, you said like, that. Sorry. We shook hands like right when I sat down. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, having a little trouble with your memory there, son. You know, that should be my calling. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a reason people call me Foggy. Ah, yeah. Well, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you you enjoy your tea. You go on. I got. I I I gotta. You know, old men, and I gotta go to the loo. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> and right. he gets well, up and just sort of wanders off. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I internally to myself, thank you for that out from the conversation because I got what I needed. <laughs> all righty. There you go. He's wandered off to the loo. Marcus is headed out to go shaking his buns on the way out the door. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll head up and head over to uh, uh, Dusk. Yep. Well. How'd yours go? How'd yours go? Oh, well, you know, Baker. 
Um, I uh, I definitely um, saw from over here uh, all of the fur on the back of your neck stand up. What the hell happened? Oh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, it was just explaining how there's news he heard this morning of a mine that has had a cave down or a cave in or some such up in the Hunting's Bane Mountains on the, uh, you know, seaside. As in, as the... in someone used the term cave down? Yeah, that's right. It kind of threw me for a loop, you know. Uh, you know, I thought caves go in when they something bad happens. You know, like well, if someone said, oh, there's a cave out. Yeah, that'd be weird. Well, 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 as far as, I guess if I were to try to language out the term, a cave in would be if the cave you are in collapses in on itself. But if, say, for example you trap door opens below you but it's not a trap door it's the floor of the cave breaks out then i suppose i could call that a cave down is that yeah why right they would use that term differently because that's not a cave in that's a, a cavern opened up below my feet well it, it well it, it there is something about that maybe that um they had broken into a chamber a large cavern uh, with mushrooms we're sighted, and some of the people got sick, and they're sending a, a, a crew up there by boat um, to to some some healers and such to help out. Um, but you know, just <laughs> uh, just uh, that 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 mountain range is all sorts of fun. Oh yeah, stuff, Don't stuff lurking under there. Please. So it felt a little close to home. Um, not yeah. sure if it was. We did, we didn't see mushrooms in in down in there, did we? Right? No, not as far as I'm aware. Not none that looked like they were weird enough to be worthy of note for a news story to be passed. For you know, just just the standard mushrooms that grow in dark, damp places. Right. So who knows what kind of um, shenanigans. Is going on there, but Let's you know, it was it, just a weird cave and not something worse. You know, we could always, you know, take a a hiatus of a few days to, uh, you know, charter a, 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 a cruise, back around. and we could always go back and have re reminisce in the foothills of those mountains, but on the seaside, of course. Yeah, not well, sure if anyone's in a hurry to go back there, but mm. sounds like trouble a brewing. We might want to keep eyes on that, you know. I don't think if there's anything crazy coming out of them caves, who's going to deal with it, you know? Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, and so, of course, the baker is uh, married to Amariel, which I believe we met, right? I believe Amariel is the guy who gave us the journal, is she not? Yes, yep. right. She gave us that. We couldn't trade it. So, yeah. but yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's, you know. Small world. Sorry, I learned that from the gentleman I had just been talking to, and I happened to find the owner of the damn building. Oh, really? Yes. That's a uh, kindly old man. I was, uh, I was offered without asking for it a, a cup of tea, and when I attempted to pay, he said, no, you don't have to pay when you're at my table, because I own the place. Um, it's just, uh, you have that way with people sometimes. Uh, yeah, I... I, I Got incredibly lucky. I, I had a reason for looking for an older individual. I wanted to see if I could find someone who, like, saw the building grow from nothing to where it is now. And, in fact, he has. Uh, he's been here since the Academy was brand spanking new. Um, and I never, in that conversation, got the vibe. Sorry, let me ask that of the DM before I go making that assertion. Uh, when he was talking about the fact that he's been here since the Academy was new and now it is where it is, did I get the vibe that he had any kind of concern about any of that? Cough, cough, uh, sorry, did check, he cough, have... Cough. Uh, uh, what is... What do you, uh, ask your question again and uh, then roll. Did I, did, or... did I get the sense that while he was talking about the Academy as it grew there was any kind of weird off feeling about it. Cool. What's your insight? Uh, my insight is plus two. Right. Uh, you did not get any in any real. He was just chatting, answering he was just your chatting. questions. Okay. Cool. Yeah, he was just chatting and answering your questions. Didn't okay. seem off about anything. 
So uh, yeah, he's he's been exposed to the college uh, since it was brand spanking new, and apparently from the outside, it's just it's a really nice college that has grown and grown and grown and teaches kids art. And when the kid can't pay for schooling, it's fine because they'll just sell their art at the academy's uh, gallery. So from the outside, everything just kind of looks legit. It's never seemed weird to anybody. Or at least not. To I'm me. gonna clarify he Whoop. didn't he he was born here the academy was already there the cerulean ah. view had not yet been built but the academy was already there it gotcha. wasn't as big as it is now but it was already there gotcha all right so he probably wouldn't use the specific term brand spanking new but when it was very young yeah relative to where it is now okay thank you yeah sorry no i misspoke if i said that I don't think you did. I think I uh, misinterpreted. Ah, because, yeah, you, okay. you mentioned it was tiny. You didn't mention it was new. That's that's on me. Anywho. Okay. Um, uh, modify memory, modify memory. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we really would have only been... Uh, uh, we really do have to uh, talk to that gal tonight then, huh? I... I... Something hinky going on. Yeah. Well, it was worth a shot. Hey, we got something out of it. Yeah. A little more knowledge. Better that than nothing. And then now we have a knot. And then in the back of Dusk's head is like... And now there's this other problem on the other side of the continent that... He's... Thinking about slightly, but... Yeah. So yeah, well, uh, shall we head back world's to... Full of uh, Shall we head back to the uh, Cerulean view? Right. Let's go share what, uh, you know, minor details that it may be, but still yeah. inf informative. Uh, Let's uh, unless, make our way. Yeah. Unless you have something you need to have happen on the walk home. I did want to have a conversation during the walk home. Or to the no, top. there's uh, no, no stops. No stops here. Uh, how are you doing in general? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that wolf did kind of ring my bell in a weird way. That, uh, mm -hmm. still processing, because it's, it's sort of like, you know, in my situation, things are coming back to me. They're, 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 they're coming back. There's some questions and, and, and a lot of blank spots. You know, I feel like I'm looking out over a very misty ocean and I'm seeing some islands pop up above the mist. And that's those little glimpses of things that I can recall. But to be told if you look out over that view and feel frustration and, and determination and to do better than whatever that may be that you've already done that you don't know, it just... Uh, I just, and then being compelled to just, just, not me, but for the others to even have a inkling that they'd have to buy these things, right? That's, mm -hmm. I feel some old, some old anger in me. There's, there's something there that, similar to how I would, feel a long time ago, I think. Hmm. About things that are unjust. And then being able to do something about it. But other than that, I'm glad. <laughs> Life's great. Every day is a wonder. But I suppose anything but that from you would be deviating from the norm, huh? Yeah, well, I just have to take it as I go. Uh, you know, uh, there, there is a road in front of me that's very clear. The Moon Maiden has me back, and uh, well, come with me. I'll learn more about myself and do some good along the way, and try not to die in the process. But you know, yeah. when me time's up, me time's up. Well, if the Moon Maiden ever makes it clear to you that there is something you need to do in order to. Uh speed up the memory recovery process. Uh, yeah, if there's a chance I could help with it, don't hesitate to ask. 
Of course, of course. I'd be uh, starting to commune more directly with my uh, more developed divine relationship and as we grow a little more powerful in, in our ways. I'm, uh, I'm able to have some more direct conversations. And as long as I ask the right question, I can start getting some answers. And that's good. That's good. To, it's good to know. It's good to feel. About yourself. Um, I'm doing really good recently, actually. Um, oh, good. It's good. Uh, I don't know if I want to fully talk about this yet, but I will simply say that there was something I've been nervous about for a little bit that I have simply attempted to handle, and it's kind of... I had no reason to be nervous, so... Well, that's good. Good. Yeah. Well, you know, catharsis wherever we can find it, so he's right. That's a big word for dusk. Ew. <laughs> but, um... Well, that's great. I, I, I'm, I'm happy for you, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Being able foggy, to uh, sort things out. Foggy kind of scratches the side of his head a little bit. Don't worry, uh, Karak's worried for you too. Well, I'm I'm glad it's, you know somebody. We're in the middle of dusk. Karak is uh, you you and Karak have quite the relationship. I'm glad to have seen it come as far as it has. Yeah, I was uh, I was worried there for a long time that it was going to be a, a perpetual battle of uh, vying for control, and it's turned into this. Uh, Elegant cooperation. It's it's downright harmonious, and that's it's great to see. Thank you. And I think could, if a dog could purr, Karak is purring. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I think when the two of you are working together more than like bouncing off each other, I think you're you're a force to be reckoned with. Oh boy. And uh, I have a feeling we're going to need you both on tip-top shape coming up. I don't know what's around the bend, but having her... Uh, the thing that weighs most in my mind is the fact that there was a bloody dragon attack on Dybrook, and yeah. it seems like everywhere we go, it's... it's you think if there was a dragon flying around these parts, it would... Uh, you know, I think it would, like, uh, maybe make some people a little anxious, right? Yeah. Word either just doesn't get around very far, or uh, the dragon doesn't seem to advertise itself. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Oh. So it just feels like it's like there's we know there's like this fire breathing lizard flying around, and everyone's just like, yeah, business is normal, it's fine. As long as it didn't hit my backyard, although I'm sure. It's not just that people are that dated, or dated, jaded. Words are hard. All right, probably should check on our list. Make sure all's oh, well. Oh yeah, so. uh, one one of you two should um one of you two should do that. Yeah, I'm definitely do that tonight, assuming we don't uh, end up in a knockdown, drag out battle of wits in this uh, academy here. Yeah. What could go wrong? Why would you say that particular set of words? <laughs> It just just sort of laughs. <laughs> well, I mean, what could what could be possibly faced could be any worse after you know nightmare-inducing uh, horrors, uh, giant horrors in the deep, and an island, misty island of undead shenanigans. Yeah, and we'll be fine. evil artifact unlike anything else. It, it... It, it'll be fine. It'll, it'll be fine. It will be fine. Because you know who says so? The Mermaiden! <laughs> Foggy just like claps his hands and holds them together and just like looks to the sky and internally is like, please just, just be a little kind. <laughs> <laughs> just like begging whoever's listening and might have a hand in fucking with Rand I'm praying to the dice gods in universe is what I'm doing. 
all the time. Fresh oh, look baked at that, bread right? being, yeah, fresh baked bread. You walked past, you saw Marcus throwing loaves up into baskets in one of the windows. He waved at you as he went by. And then you go on a little further down and the girl in the chocolate shop waves at you as you walk by. <laughs> I, I give, I give yeah, a, I a recognizing it. point and then bow. I would, I would like to interject as soon as boys are within 120 feet of the hotel. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, have, have they finished, have the boys finished their walk home conversation? Yes. Okay. Unless so, Dusk needed something of me. Nope. All good? We're good. 120 so, feet. Once, uh, once the boys approach about 120 feet from the hotel, Foggy, regardless of where they are in their conversation, is going to hear Maev in his head. Just like the ass end of, end of I can't remember which town it was. Are, are, are you supposed to be hiding your face here? Are, is everything okay? You guys were going to walk out. Good, good lord, that's scary every time. Um, I don't think I need to hide my face here, but uh, I think we're fine. All right, well. Okay. Don't feel bad about reaching into my head, it's fine. Just caught me off guard. Um, <laughs> Did I also scare Karak? I didn't mean to scare Karak. I'm sorry if I scared Karak and I just, like, mentally pat him on the head. Yeah, I was gonna say internal check-in. Is Karak okay? <laughs> yeah, he's fine. He's right. fine. He has grown accustomed to the Maya barrage. <laughs> Fantastic. This is the, the, the whole 120 feet is because it's message because I, I can't do the the, the big powerful spells. Yes. And you've just been casting message over and over again for the last 30 minutes? Just waiting for a response. <laughs> I mean, yeah, pretty much. She oh, she chilled out she was in the room and then she was like, I, I have to go for a walk and wandered outside and she's pacing up and down a dock and pointing in random directions, not entirely sure which way they took off and just waiting for it. <laughs> at, at some point, take a minute, just walk into the water. Yep. The fishes on this end of town are a little prettier than they are on the other end of town. A lot less kelp Ooh, over here. Damn, even the fucking fish are class divided? What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> different boats for different folks. <laughs> yeah. There's fancy water down here. No, just fancier boats. <laughs> less shit leaking off them. <laughs> that makes sense. That that actually does make sense. Actually, now that you say that like that, yeah, yeah. But now and the fact that I was joking the, about the all the water over here being sparkling water doesn't make much sense anymore. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> That's fine. You were saying something, Maeve. During, uh, during the meander, she is repeatedly trying to message Foggy over like about a half an hour or so before they come back. And then every once in a while, she just, like, shoots something off to either Snaps or Ross and, like, the fish down here are really pretty. They weren't so pretty over there on the other end of town, but they're really pretty down here. And she sounds like she's underwater. They're <laughs> <laughs> really pretty down here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will say to you that if you wandered out onto that dock, um, you would see that a very, very large ship has arrived sometime this morning. And uh, by, oh, probably 30 minutes before the boys returned, there were some fancy dress people climbing out of that boat and coming down the gangplank and making their way into the hotel in, you know, noble and shit. 
Mm -hmm. And that Maya would have uh, having a a, a celebratory vacational time, walking up and down the plank like they own the place. And Gaudi Snoot bows and grovels to each of them. Yeah. Maya would have probably been uh, climbing up the the dock as the the fancy pants McGee's all started wandering and just kind of like shot a whispered message over to Rasa and been like, there's more snooty bitches arriving. I really need to hit something. <laughs> Who was that too? Rasa. Rasa. Swing away. <laughs> The uh, the passersby that think they're better than everybody hear a very menacing chuckle <laughs> from a dripping wet half orc. And the gentleman in dress to the nines just sort of gently but carefully makes his way around the woman that he's with so that he puts himself between you and her and escorts mm. her toward the hotel. Darling, let's just get a move on, shall we, dear? You have our bag, sir. Great. It's they're just getting to the hotel now. <laughs> Mental note. And and she says this out loud. Mental note. That one passed. And then jumps back into the water and <laughs> <laughs> swims away and then wanders back up and so she she is absolutely soaking wet by the time dusk and foggy come on. Cool, cool, cool. Alrighty. Reconvening, dropping shit off at Gaudi Snoot, uh, waiting patiently in the lobby to drop off shit with Gaudi Snoot while other people are being checked into not nearly as nice a room as yours. And <laughs> they get escorted upstairs. You're able to drop your shit off and head up to your room. My Ev is dripping all over the carpet up there. What are we doing? I mean, it's getting close to six o'clock. We could just jump to six o'clock. You could stop by and and ask Gowdy Snoot to send some food up to your room so you don't have to sit in the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Some room service. So yeah, you, Foggy and Dusk will drop their stuff off at the front desk and ask Gowdy Snoot to request that the kitchen send some stuff upstairs. And he'll respond with, you didn't have to ask me, but okay. <laughs> and so the two of you get upstairs. Maya is changing out of her wet clothes. And one of the guys within five minutes is banging on the door. These trays are heavy. I gotcha. I'm gonna start. And Maya and... probably only half dressed goes and opens the door and helps retrieve the the heavy trays. Oh, he's trying so hard not to look at the boobs. Trying so hard not <laughs> to look at the boobs. Holding the tray up a little higher than is necessary. To get in there. Put the tray down. Turns his back to turn around to bed. Head back toward the door. Was it Jessup? <laughs> Yeah. Has it has it been less than uh how long did it last? Let's see, here we go. Has it been less than twenty four hours? Mm, just barely. I'm Why? just give him a pat on the shoulder and thanks, Jessup and <laughs> if that's from our dinner. I can't remember what happened 24 hours ago. I had mommy's little secret, which gave me plus two to con and calm emotions with the pat of a hand. Calm emotions so he's less nervous about your boobs. Got it. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, he his shoulders relax a little bit, and he still avoids looking at the boobs, but makes his way out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be respectful, ma'am. Yep, here we go. Okay. And the platter <laughs> is the two trays that he brought up are just covered in exactly what you would have wanted. Like, if you had daydreamed about a meal, that's what showed up on the plate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and each of you could, just glancing over the two trays, identify which plate was meant for you. 
just because of how much it appeals, just one plate in particular truly appeals to you or to Kurok. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Mayev's definitely going to like cast a little oh. sideways glance at, at Foggy as she reaches over very, very slowly and takes some bacon. <laughs> Just gonna jokingly like bite at the air near her. Ah. <laughs> no, you're good, Texan. It's fine. There's definitely some Zorka berries in a cup on one of the plates. Appears to be the only thing the kitchen can provide from the Astral Sea, but that's what they put on your plate along with whatever else. He muted. I don't know if Andrew knows he's muted. Wait, oh, I was being talked at. Ah, hi. Zorka berries on your plate, along with yeah, whatever yeah. other mundane foods you might have thought about this afternoon. Ah, yes, we're going through the food no jutsu again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So... Dinner is served. It's quite lovely. And six o'clock rolls around. Let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. One final thing is Snaps will hand Dusk a little jar of like a little salve. And she has used one of her 10 non-magical remedies charges for her herbal kit. Oh, thank you. That yeah, I would say while. that your herbalism kit has like 10 little jars so that you don't have to worry about acquiring jars or tins or whatever. They're little jars in the kit. I got a starter set. This is great. Thank you so much. Wait out. Let me see. Let me know if I can adjust anything. We'll see how good it should help with like, the itchiness. You like kind of like swiftly you know, moves to like a corner of the room where he can kind of sort of un undo it, stick a finger, and starts like slathering up around his scalp. <laughs> <laughs> let's see here. Um, let's have a medicine check from Snaps. Medicine check from Snaps. Okay. I am proficient in medicine. Um, with um, advantage it's... because you are. Uh, proficient with your herbalism kit, right? I am. Yeah, so prof uh, go ahead and do advantage on that. That is uh, da, 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 a lot. 18 plus 7. Oh, yeah. This, this stuff, if you had an itch, it's gone. If you had a slight throbbing sensation, it's gone. It smells divine. Mm, that's quite fresh. Is that, is that some sort of uh, mint. Uh, and a little bit of, there's a little bit of lavender in there. I went with like a, a little bit of a calming uh, thing. I don't know my herbs. Maybe Ooh, it's cat mint. <laughs> Maya is going to wander <laughs> over and go. <laughs> as soon as Dusk says, I don't know my herbs. Maya is also going to wander over and go. You also, uh, let me just fix it. And she smooths his hair down because it's fucking <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, this does affect uh, the natural uh, style, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Would you want me uh, walking around like, uh, like I just, I don't know. Got licked by a cow. Got licked by a cow, yes. <laughs> a cow man being licked by a cow. That would be hilarious. With anime now, hair. It, total anime hair. <laughs> uh, I, I assume when uh, Maya pulls her hands back from Dusk's now salved up hair, there's salve all over her hands, so she's going to wander over to, to Foggy. Wow. And uh, hey. just, just kind of like slick down the hair for him because oh, okay. got to put this stuff somewhere. <laughs> you know what? Fine. It does smell nice. And she sniffs her own hand. She's like, "Yeah, it does smell good." And she'll like fix the the flyaways from the 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 <laughs> swimming earlier. 
<laughs> All righty. Well, Dusk's injury or whatever you want to call that up there on top of his head is no longer bothering him at all and won't bother him for a good 24 hours. Oof, this is, this is, this is grand. You, you really outdid yourself. A lavender, a little bit of chamomile. It should help you fall asleep. Oh, well, I need to keep my wits about me for a little while longer, but uh, there'll be time to sleep. I mean, it's not like magical sleepiness. Just, you know, once we figure out this whole school thing. Mm. Don't worry, Dusky. If you start to fall asleep, I'll punch you. I can always count on you, Maya. Yes. <laughs> well, yes, I don't want to be nodding off in the middle of uh, shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a good old black eye to wake you up. All right. Well, <laughs> shall we? Shall we uh, undertake this? Clandestine rendezvous. That's the words I've heard. Those those were some real big words, Jodowski. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Do I do I get to hit anything? I need to hit something. If you want to spar after we're done, in case no fight happens, we can spar. Whoop. Okay. In your head. (laughs) Whoop. I had a feeling. Let's keep in mind that this might not be intentional. We need to stop it, but yeah, it might there might be, be a chance for some, diplomacy, like, whatever's going on. Yeah. It might not be some teacher or professor being a piece of crap. It might just be something else. Unintended side effects. But yeah, let's do it. Do, 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 do. Downstairs, collecting all of your weaponry, I assume. Uh, Gowdy Snoot acknowledges that, uh, yes, you folks are spending another night Mm. and here's your stuff and is kind of like eyeballing the stairs and the restaurant while you're in the lobby with all of your weaponry. Just kind of keeping an eye out in case any of those hoity-toities might be coming around. He doesn't want them to be bothered by presence of all the weaponry that he's handing out over the counter, but also being very respectful of uh, giving you your stuff. Don't worry. I I already scared them. Oh, you you scared them? My guests? You, You scared the guests? Well, there the was hotel? there was some there was some fancy pantsers coming down the big long dock off of the big fancy boat, and I was swimming and climbed up the dock and had a, a funny thought. And well, I, I I may have may have laughed in a scary way. And well, ma'am, I, a, I must it's, admit it's to fine. you, he passed the that... test. Oh, oh, good. Uh, I'm so pleased to hear that. I have to admit to you, when you laugh, there is a lot of, um, shall we say, toothsomeness. It occasionally makes your smile just a little bit terrifying to someone who doesn't know you. It might seem a little terrifying when you smile but uh, i've gotten to know you now over the last 24 hours and and i i know you would not have meant to scare them and i understand and my ev is gonna just like lean in real close and hit one of the super terrifying grins and go you sure <laughs> about that mm-hmm. <laughs> yep mm-hmm and his and eyes just slide over to Dusk because <laughs> he's got a rapport with Dusk and he just kind of nods quiet. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep. Hey. Does does does, does Rumple Mints have hair? Rumple Mints! <laughs> That's like not even new. close. He has a lovely ring of very frizzy hair around the side of his head. And a lovely shiny bit of nothing on top. I I uh, I just kind of like pat him on top of the head and walk away. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy your evening out. 
she just hollers over her shoulder, by. Oh, I will. <laughs> and, and Dusk will just sort of just stay behind, just, you know, kind of uh, give give Gowdy Stu kind of a, a sigh and a, they're good people. Don't judge them on the first 10 impressions alone, okay? They're good <laughs> and somewhat terrifying people, yes, sir. Yeah, you... Yeah have yourself quite a quite a clan there uh lady rasa has really surrounded herself in a blanket of security and safety i i am impressed by she's a, her choices and your choices for that matter she's quite lovely she's a noble woman of discerning taste you might say i think yeah. that's the word discerning right uh, yeah yep discerning. she's she's smart smart very smart woman indeed We'll be off. Might be back a little late. Exploring the place, as it were. A oh, lovely town. Yeah, enjoy yourselves. We'll be Tonight. here. Right. Well, good day. I haven't even heard Sarah's voice. Is she here today? <laughs> I am here today, but I am <laughs> dealing with a lot of possible sciatic pain. Mm. Oh. So Sad I am doing like the 30,000 ballet positions trying to get comfortable. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. That was me earlier today. The, the, the nerve cluster that's like right on the tip of the shoulder blade has been severely pissed off for two days. Oh, that's probably my fault because I tweaked my neck. I figured. Because I didn't do a damn thing. Anyway, back in town. Looking for something to oh. hit. Yeah. Oh, making a way downtown. You know, yeah. Hmm. So, here's the thing. You guys went to the tavern and Dusk looked for somebody sitting alone at the bar and Foggy looked for somebody old and I forgot that I had written a blurb about somebody you could have met somewhere back in town if you were overheard while chatting, chatting about the school somewhere. So can we back up a bit to when Dusk and Foggy rejoined one another in the tavern before they left the tavern this Dark little retcon let's do it yeah. it's a it's a quickie quickie i'll literally just read the paragraph to you okay. uh if if you are all in a place to be overheard while chatting about the school in particular a young man will introduce himself his name is rafe and he's going to tell you about his girlfriend winnie she's a half elf She's in her fourth year at the academy. Her practice is focused mostly on oil and canvas, and she has sold some really amazing pieces in the gallery, but lately she's been different. She's less excited about her work, less interested in spending time with him. Uh, he is pretty sure that she once was completely head over heels in love with him, but now sometimes it seems like she just sort of tolerates his continued presence in her life. And he is convinced that something is wrong and he can't figure out what it is. And that's pretty much all you would have gotten out of a conversation with Rafe, whose girlfriend's name is Winnie. Right. Uh, if you guys uh, were to look in the general chat, uh, I think, uh, yep, yeah, uh, well definitely noticed. Uh, this is the girl. Uh, Winnie is the girl that... Uh, uh, Dusk had talked to in class. Right. That I uh, was talking about her art. I'm also saying that loud for YouTube. Last episode. <laughs> Sorry, I am Last lispy today. It's okay. <laughs> Got the Rafe. Where are you going, princess? Were you squishing her? 
All righty. Um, so you arrive back at campus and you head over here to this hedgerow that you walked um, Mr. Warthurl to last night. And you're standing around in the bushes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. In the bushes. Just loitering. Loitering around behind a hedge wall, a, a, you know, a, a row of hedges. And you see Bukambe stroll out from the front of the gallery and walk out to the main road. And I assume y'all are going to hunker down and hide while he makes his way uh, up the main road and down and around. And he's obviously headed home. Uh, in Someone's definitely this general someone direction. Is absolutely going to have to like grab the back of my shirt and yank her down when he comes walking by because she, <laughs> she is just out of and, uh, and we're not going to bother with a stealth check because I'm not interested in you failing. So she <laughs> okay. wanders off toward home. <laughs> One of those things where I've learned as a DM, don't ask for a role if the outcome is inconsequential. <laughs> so we're not rolling. We're just successfully stealthing. And then shortly thereafter, the gate kind of cracks open a little bit and somebody peeks out. And uh, then the gate opens a little wider and you see a Muriel sort of waving you in silently. Come on, come on, come on, come on, like a teenager trying to sneak people into the basement for a silent party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we still have the journal on us? The uh, the one that had lost all the ink? I sure, imagine yeah, uh, somebody it's kept it, yeah. yeah. It's a pretty little That's journal, exactly. leather-bound, empty journal now. I'd, I, would, I would probably have mentioned to whoever has it, like, check it when we go through the walls and see if the ink comes Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Sure. Who's holding it? I would think Rasa have it, has it, because it was given to her. Yeah, I think so. So, Rasa will flip it open uh, to, you know, somewhere in the middle of the book and see that the page is covered in a faint dust. Um, but there doesn't seem to be anything written thereon. And if she turns the page a couple of times, there's this faint gray dust throughout the book. But there are no words written on any of the pages anymore. Damn. Nope, Shit. we don't suck. Whoops. We broke it. Well, sorry to say, Muriel, thing you gave us. Well, lost it. Right. We broke it. Yeah. Oh. We didn't mean to, but we broke it. We didn't do it on purpose. I, I, if we left the academy, maybe there was a enchantment of some sort, probably, maybe. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, the guy that wrote it was kind of, you know, one of those wizardy Magic types. Doing magic-y things all the time, which is one of the reasons that we had to protect the school that we the way that we do. He wanted to be sure that nobody interfered with the students the way he had inadvertently, I guess, been interfered with or something. When he, I don't know, I I tried to read it. He was kind of a wordy guy in his journal. You know, he had a lot to say that really was un interesting but there were a couple of passages where he talked about him or they and the basement <laughs> oh good. but the school doesn't have a basement <laughs> so well, due respect really? to ms Muriel, there's probably not one that's huh we have a Great A spelunker here, though. Oh. Okay. 
Well, I, I, I don't know who he or it. they could be. I mean, and you know, this is seventy-five years ago. I, I don't, I don't know. It just, it, it, whatever. I can't remember exactly what words were written, but it made me feel like there was something or someone in the basement that he was like cajoling or or forcing to do something to make the school fantastic. And I, I'm not real sure what it was exactly. It just, it seemed sort of nefarious, but also not clearly spelled out. So I wasn't sure what he was, I just, it, I got a feeling that if there were a basement, there was something going on down there. So wait, the the founder, the the wizard guy, was cajoling someone or some things in the basement. He was doing the cajol yeah. cajoling, or is it the other way around? Yeah, it was him. It's like he had something trapped, or or I don't know, something down there. Whether it was some sort of magical artifact or something in the basement and she's got air quotes the basement but we don't have a basement so i don't i mean for all i know he was talking about something in the basement of his childhood home but it just felt weird when i was reading it it just felt wrong and weird he the founder who is dead has or had something trapped in the basement okay yeah you know how to find a basement is, is there any place that's off limits mm -hmm. to you you're told that you should never go no. Any place have that's free off, you don't have a key for? N no, I have full access to the school. To the headmaster's quarters, even? Oh, you know, he might lock his office when he leaves at night, but we could go check. And it's upstairs in the library. Go. Yeah, we could go check. I, so if she'll... I were trying to keep a deep dark secret in a deep dark place, I would probably keep it under some sort of security. If that means first in the living quarters, that might be as good as any place to start. Okay. Um, sure, and she'll lead you back into the building, up to where the library is, and then up those stairs to a door that's right next to that giant portrait of the uh, founder of the school. And the door is, in fact, unlocked. And she opens the door, and there's Bakambi's office. It's rather plush. Velvet covering the chair and there's a little sitting sofa by a window so while she was leading us up uh maya is just kind of twirling the wand of secrets and she just kind of leans over to aste and goes you're smart what's cajoling mean cajoling <laughs> <laughs> well uh, it's basically to persuade someone. Uh, usually, usually you grease someone up pretty hard, and they uh, that can be considered cajoling. Grease somebody in the cajoling. Uh, I'm sorry, that little, <laughs> too accidentally moved the window. It's 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 usually in the sense of like trying to pull someone into it. It's persuasion in a less kind term. Oh, you mean like when I do this and she does the super creepy grin and it chuck. And he doesn't move and he's like, I don't know what you're trying to do there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess not. I don't know what you're trying um, to... Uh, what, what, what are you cajoling me to do there? I, uh, tell me what cajoling means. <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these two do not communicate with each other well <laughs> at all. My goodness. Really? I thought that went quite well. This is well. what happens. 
This is what happens when you bop one with a smart stick and one with a dumb stick. <laughs> Someone clearly knocked all of the brains out of my Ev and they flew into the Astral Sea and landed there. Evidently. <laughs> Um, but in, in any, at any rate, when we do get to the, uh, uh, headmaster, that's the word, the headmaster's office, mm -hmm. um, my wand of secrets, uh, will tell me if I can see and D beyond is being weird with scaling. Um, I I don't I can't see. I don't know why it's doing this to me. Um, my wand of secrets has a radius. I'm pretty sure within thirty feet of me. So as we walk up to um. Mr. Puckface's office. I'm gonna mm -hmm. just use my wandy thing and see if a secret door trap lights up. Uh, read it to me again, please. Uh, the wand has three charges. While holding it, you can use an action to expend one of its charges. And if a secret door or trap is within 30 feet of you, the wand pulses and points at the one nearest to you. Okay, I'm gonna uh, make that be a very broad definition so that okay. uh, the wand points at a floorboard uh, about five boards away from your left foot. Okay, that, I mean, that tracks it. I found buried treasure from a child with it before. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna kind of like, ha 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 ha. Uh, that's, 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 that's what I thought. And she's got the axe out and she's, she's, she's ready to just start wailing on the floor. Hey, 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 hey. We're not, we're not gonna destroy the floor. That's unnecessary. Need to hit something. Hey, maybe so if there like is something creepy flip it around in the basement, and use it like a you can kill it. I was going to say, save the violence for when we won't leave any evidence that matters. And Amuriel is standing in the room with you, <laughs> like panicking. Wait, you're not going to chop the, the. Wait, what are what are you doing with the axe? Wait, what? This is not what I had in mind. Don't worry, she's just like this sometimes. <laughs> well, let's not let her be like this on the wooden floor. She doesn't. She doesn't mean to chop the. She's floor. got it. We'll stop her. Don't worry. Okay. She just kind of like have... tucks the wand back in her waistband. Does someone have a crowbar so that we can maybe do this a little bit more gently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she pulls her backpack off and pulls out one of the two crowbars that she has. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, in looking around, does it look like there's, like, a clearly intended way to open this before I start gently prying floorboards? Uh, it's just a slightly loose floorboard. It's got a little gap around it. Can I gently attempt to open? Um, you got long fingernails, dude? Uh, not really. <laughs> Thought you would probably keep uh, it. kind of maintained. Uh, oh, 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 I'd, oh, I'd oh. suggest Rasa do it. Rasa has to run Wait, stairs to I have, the child. I have an idea. Snaps also has claws. There yeah, you go. Snaps little little sharpie claws could probably get in there and get just get in that little gap and give it a bit of a tug and it'll lift right up. Hell yeah. Oh, under the floorboard. There is dust, a lot of dust. There is, uh, you can see the joists and uh, in between the joists, there is this little cube, rectangular cube that is completely covered in dust and maybe some cobwebs, just sort of nestled up against one of the joists. Snaps will reach in and grab it. Pull it out. 
Okay. And in your hands, you have a simple wooden box that is dusty as all get out. But you can make out that there does seem to be something engraved on the top. Gently wiping off the dust. And you see an, uh, a pretty little engraved horse in full gallop. Uh, carved in the top, very decorative. Uh, it's it's a pretty little box, like one that you would put um, trinkets or uh, maybe jewelry. It's a simple little box. It doesn't even have a latch. It just hinges. Okay. Looking at it, kind of just making sure there's no weird hinky stuff, uh, and then open it. it um. Just gonna open it. Did, did you're looking at it for gonna, hinky stuff? I did you want to like check look it for, for traps, traps or something? <laughs> yes. Okay, I, yeah. I will allow you to do whatever that role would be for check for traps. Check for traps. I think uh, it's it's perception to find a trap, investigation to to, to disarm a trap. I believe that's how we run it in our games. Yes, that sounds right to me. Okay. So looking for traps, perception, uh, 19. Yeah, it, it seems perfectly safe. You may open the box. Seems safe and to me. I'm going to open. Right. Inside the box, DM layer, you find a rolled up little piece of parchment paper. Can you see a little piece of parchment paper? Yes. They do. Yes. Fabulous. Oh, I can move it by accident. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh shit, so you I. should be able to you should be all should be able to move it, rotate it. You could do anything but tear it because I couldn't figure out how to make it so that you could accidentally tear it. Aste, does this look magical to you? <laughs> Looks kind of fancy and magical. Mm -hmm. You want me to take a couple different books at it to see what I can find out? Oh. Um, what kind of check are you asking to roll there, sir? You uh, want to just gonna run be a couple. an arcana check? So first we'll roll an arcana check. I'll give myself cool. guidance for that. Uh, I don't think my lower hold primer helps with that. No, it's history remember. or religion. Are you more sorcerer than wizard or more wizard uh, than sorcerer? I am currently more sorcerer than wizard by one level. Okay. Five sword, right. four whiz. Okay. So, so, uh, I don't know, but someone's a real fan of the spirograph, apparently. Hmm. What's a spirograph? Exactly. It's 17 plus 8. Okay. It's 25. That's okay. lovely. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I know what a spirograph is. I was joking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nosebleed. Nosebleed. Okay. Um, so you look at this thing, and uh, you are able to discern quite easily that this is magical in nature. It is essentially a uh, uh, the beginnings of some sort of rune or glyph. It's very incomplete. There is simply not enough stuff here to be a thing. <laughs> but it's the start of something. Mm. So it's amateur work. He says out loud. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yes. This is quite amateur. This is... It's supposed to be something, but it's only the beginning. And, uh... Hmm... I'm curious. Oh. I'm curious if I could finish this glyph to turn it into something, but I wouldn't know what to turn it into. Well, mm. uh, 
Yeah. For now, I say let's hold on to it and keep looking for stuff. Do, do those is those words Just, there? Yeah. Hmm? Are those words written on them there? Uh, it's a rune? It's, it's a f- that's exactly what it would be. It's a rune, rune or a glyph, but it's so incomplete it's hard to tell. Mm. Like I said, this is essentially what would be considered amateur's work. Well, is there anything else in the box or the hole? Oh, sorry. Uh, there's some spiders in there, some spider webs, and a lot of dust. Okay, well, um, fireball. <laughs> Burn it. Um, well, that, 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 uh, I mean, that's cool and all, but that was not the basement I was hoping to find. How many times can you use that damn thing? Two more. Do we want to try again in this room, or do we think maybe the entrance to a basement would be somewhere else? We have to investigate with our eyes. Yeah, let's and try some of that. Let's, 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 let's just be nosy. Yeah. Good old-fashioned perception check. <laughs> Although, and then he points to my uh, don't discredit yourself, that was a damn good find. I was looking for a basement. Well, we still found what is clearly the beginnings of something crazy magical that was important enough to hide under a floorboard. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think so Aste uh... said he wanted to do more than one check. We only let him do an arcana yes. check. Was there something else you wanted to do? Uh, oh, I could, I could do a, th- a thorough check on this thing if we wanted to give me a little time, yeah. I could yeah, do like a religion um, check, a history check. I could do all kinds of good shit on this. Yeah, everybody <laughs> else, uh, let's let's gently, without breaking anything, move things around a little bit, and without turning the room upside down, turn the room upside down. <laughs> <laughs> gently poke around a little bit. Yeah, it's right. If you pick something up and move it, put it back where you found it, kind of thing. Yeah. So what was the next thing Aste wanted to try? I'm going to give you one more. Um, before I make the check, does this, like, on a surface level look religious? Or is it more arcane? No, it's definitely more wizardy, arcane Okay, that's what I was thinking. Okay. So um, we'll... You know, it might even have a flavor to it. What, um... Mm-hmm. Uh, give me a moment. I yeah. might be able to tell you. I'm going to taste it. Just starts licking the paper. <laughs> Gonna DM the mama real quick. Uh, hold on. Oh. That's not what I meant to do. How did I get into Chrome again? What the fuck is this thing? Well, that didn't help me.
enchantments. Ooh, that's spicy. That's a oh, I, good I, choice. I, I, deafened. That's what happened there. Whoopsie. Okay, well, if I'm going to give it one more, like, check, and it's definitely more arcane than it is religious, oh, yeah. then I might as well just... That's a good one for this. Can I give you... Uh, it's... Snaps, did you hold it up to the light? She might actually say that while she's looking around. Like, Aste, do you know... Like, I've heard about, like, invisible ink. What if we, like, hold it up to a light or something? It would depend on the kind of light, but, um, I could definitely try that. If oh, you she's, like, hold it the guy's desk. up to the window, you realize this is very, very, very thin paper. Like, you Ugh. can almost see the panes of glass through the paper. Hmm. Well, that's, gentle. In that's interesting. Yeah. You said it was incomplete, right? So maybe we got to find more. That's yes. exactly what I was thinking. Exactly what I was thinking. There so might be some every... place where this scribes onto something else, or you should be able to match it up with the terrain around it. Well, I guess we have to go traipsing around this academy looking at uh, various buildings. I guess I won't worry about another check then in that case. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. Speaking of other buildings, Dusk, in your expert carpenter opinion, uh, what building do you think like is built like it might have a basement? Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a carpenter per se. Structurally but, makes sense. I mean, basements in general, are usually where you keep things that you want to keep cool, right? Uh, so maybe there might be one near, like, a kitchen or a cafeteria place. Uh, or if it's storage for things that you, you know, like, I have to imagine for things like, I don't know, would wizards keep some in a, a basement? I don't know, do you have basements in the astral plane? Do you? Uh, depends on how deep the meteor goes. All right, <laughs> but I'd say you know anywhere where there are things that you want to store and you don't have room, you know, and shelves would be a good start. So I I would say you know, maybe the kitchen. Maybe there's if there's a uh, Muriel. Is there any place where uh, paints are kept or uh, ingredients for? Anything you all do? Um, yeah, uh, sure. I'm going to get you back over here and tell you to zoom in on the school. So you are currently in this building. Pretty much dead center on this building. You might be on the DM layer. Oh, shit. How about now? Yes. So if you are zoomed in, you will see that this is a dormitory, this is a dormitory, and this is classrooms, and this all the way at the back here is the cafeteria. So the kitchens are above the cafeteria. And then this what back here this? is, yeah, that's going to be more dormitories and there's a chapel in there and there's a little graveyard out behind it and uh it's just more uh it's overflow dormitory because the school got bigger than the two dormitory buildings could manage so they built another building <laughs> a new building you say it's the newer building yeah I don't figure that will help us. If this reaches back to the beginnings of the school, we should be looking for older things, not newer things. What, what about dead middle, right, of this, of this, uh, this walled-in place? What if, what's the center of it? Is it the, the maybe, like, maybe it's like a, like a bullseye, if you will. Dead center on the round building is the library you are in. 
Ah. And you are on the upper level of the library, about right here. It's hard to uh, maybe if I draw a dot, freehand a dot. Oop. You're up there. Well, no, that's not true. Yeah. You're up here. <laughs> well, if we're in the upper level, yeah. basements are going to be down. Yeah. And there's classrooms in that outer ring around the library. You met a Muriel probably in uh, one of the classrooms in this building. And there's littler classrooms all around this outer ring of this building. Well, why don't we go towards, like I said, a, a good basement would probably be Originally used for storage, if it was eventually converted to some other use. Um, and, and I don't know if this thing has like an area of effect, like, you know, some magics do, right? You'd want it pretty close to the middle of it all, right? Yeah. So maybe there is something in this building in the middle down below, or it's maybe it's further towards the middle of the grounds, which is towards the cafeteria. There's a little the mess I hall, I you. believe it's probably called. So I don't know. We, I, we, I'd say um, You're, okay, so what are, what are we doing? Where are we going? How, 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 uh, you're one there, Maya. How many more charges do you think you can use it for today? Two. Two? Mm -hmm. Does it recharge? Ever? Oh, my mic is off. I wonder nobody said I'm sorry when I mentioned that I just injured myself. Oh, nope. Don't injure yourself. Oh, don't hurt you. Yeah, yeah, I, I how much damage did you take? Uh, probably less than one. I'm fine. I did a stupid. I was cracking my knuckles and I over torqued something. Mm. Um, Wait, no. yeah. So uh, I would suggest let's let's. Did we find anything in anything else? Rather, uh, while we were turning the guy's office upside down, not really. A couple of us were poking around. And then I have a, a second suggestion before we go downstairs. And for the Here. record, yes, my wand recharges one a day. Okay. One a day. Got it. Cool. DM. Yeah, if the mom is talking. Yes. Like there we go. Okay. Did what? we find anything? Did we find anything did... else interesting outside of the scroll when we were doing a little gentle poke around? Should I roll an investigation? Oh, sure. Um, we're not going to do useless rolls. The oh, okay. answer is you could spend 30 minutes studying this man's office, and he is definitely the headmaster of a school. All right. Uh, well, yep. let's, uh, let's move on. Yeah, let, let's, oh. head, uh, let's head down to the main level. Uh, and then at some point, I'm going to elbow Aste. Mm -hmm. well, you can, like, scare uh, him a little bit. Not yeah, used to human sorry. interaction. Um, you're good. Um, not a human, but I understand what you meant. Well, um, person interaction. Yeah. I'm um, off, so. While the rest of us are, um, I know you've already kind of studied the thing pretty hard, um, just with one's eyes and mind, um, but while we're checking out around the um, uh, main floor of the mm -hmm. library, which is a much larger space than an office, uh, have you considered... Um, I know there's a, a magic that I've heard of that I think you've done before. You did it in the the in the gallery, the looking for magical things spell. Detect magic. Yes, that's the one. Uh, have you done that to the paper yet? I don't think I could. Uh, unless have we taken a rest at this point? Nope. Well, uh, I mean, you, could have short you definitely had a short rest. Okay, let me check to make sure. Or hold primary. I uh, uh just, just, nope, long rest. Nope. <clears throat> um, yeah, 
As it stands, I've become somewhat of an o it's become somewhat of an oversight that I don't actually have that spell in my book. Therefore, and he like taps the Lorehold primer. I use this to give me a chance at least once a day. Oh, and you used that earlier in the gallery. Fuck. That I did. Um I that know that is... spell, but I can't remember actually, the details. Hmm. Let me Dusk, think. do you remember that spell? Actually, let me think for a moment here. I have an idea. Uh, and then uh, I will need a DM's thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a class feature called... Where the heck is it? Arcane Recovery. It says when I finish a sh uh, once per day when I finish a short rest, I can choose to... Expended. I can choose expended spell slots to recover up to a combined level of two. This isn't a spell slotted thing, but it is a spell of a level two or lower. Could I get my use of detect magic back through that? Yeah. I'm Would you like me to expend my inspiration too? No, so I think if you normally have the ability to recover a spell slot of level two, you should be able to recover a magical item that a spell -like ability. you are able to use. It's a spell-like ability that you can do once a day. Yeah. With that book. Yeah, it's a first-level spell. I would say spell. you could do... Yeah, let it be the same. It'll just be part okay. of that choice that you can make. Yeah. And then he's and then he like goes through and he says, however, because I am so great... <laughs> <laughs> I, I have already thought of this. And oh, so, gosh. and then he opens the lore hold primer and like, uh, he says, where's the page? Oh, um, yeah, I was, I was futzing with it at some point here. Thank you. And he takes the page and like scans the lore hold primer for anything dealing with it. Uh, and it would, uh, just to, to semi go through the detect magic regarding the book. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm assuming it just comes up as enchantment again, though. Um, you're doing detect magic specifically on this piece of paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, detect magic. It's the actual spell. Detect magic, right? I believe so. Yes. So it, it's a it radius around you to a certain distance. Uh, let me read it just to be sure. Pulling it up as well. Uh, you detect the presence. Detect magic would be like 30 feet. Yeah. As long, but you know, with limitations of through things like stone or yeah. lead or things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this little piece of paper you have in your hand. Mm -hmm. Uh. It's got, you're trying to make it out and, and you cast your spell while you're thinking about it and you realize that the ink itself might be black, but there is this sheen of yellow to it as you've cast this spell and then <laughs> sort of emanating from it is like this tiny thin wisp of yellow, almost smoke like a thread <laughs> raising up out of the piece of paper and sort of wafting in the breeze out the door of the office. Uh-oh. And I'm just not even going to think, going to pat Foggy and be like, genius. And he just follows it. He's going to follow it and let Foggy collect everyone if they have to. <laughs> uh, you guys stay here. I'm making so sure he's not alone. Just Headed out the door. Bye! With the piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, and I'm right. literally going to turn to the rest of the gang and go, uh, you guys stay here. I'm making sure he's not alone. And I walk with him. What? He found a thing. Don't worry about it. Well, uh, because so they're might, waiting in the might... office? Uh, huh? I thought we had. I thought the whole group was moving towards the main library and we were going back to the office. I thought was what was I happening. thought you were all still standing in the office when he cast the spell. Oh, well, never mind. Fred is leaving the office, so Aste is leaving the office. Oh, okay. Sorry, yes. I'm so done. Aste is now following a thread that 
goes from the piece of paper out through the door of this office, out into the main library. Area. Out into the, okay, I completely and totally misunderstood you. Uh, yeah, so while he's leaving, okay, uh, I suggested him do a thing, and it is leading him to a path. So, uh, eh, before he wanders off and gets himself injured, not that he's not capable of defending himself, but you know what I mean, and I start walking. Oh, there we go. I'm going. So, Aste, uh, your eyes are trained on this very thin, wispy line of yellow something that is undulating and just sort of floating in the air out from this piece of paper, down the stairs about halfway, and then over the banister and down to the first floor. And with it, you can follow it with your eyes for about 30 feet. Um, well, then I will teleport to uh, the first floor. <laughs> so Starlight you teleport to the end the of the thread. <laughs> yep, so Austin is walking step. down the stairs, and you guys see him turn and look over the banister, and then he disappears. And anybody who looks over the banister will see that he reappears at the bottom <laughs> in the in that central area of the library um, where the walls are surrounding you, uh, surrounding him, our bookshelves. Oh, and, Lord, can I start running down the stairs? And as you land on the floor at the bottom, that thread continues from where you are now standing up to and uh, in uh, at one of the bookshelves. Uh... Any specific um, book? Well, strangely enough, uh, it is a like the third book over on the left on the second shelf from the top. But also, um, you realize that from your left, there's a, another, when you landed at the bottom, less than 30 feet from this bookshelf, you realize that it's not just the one thread you were following, that you can now see a multitude of threads. Oh, Lord. A multitude of threads. And there, there are more yellow, like the one you're looking at, but there's also way, way more, way, way more threads that are more the color that you saw on the artwork in the gallery. <sighs> and all of these threads, all of them are aiming to, right at that one book. They like feed right into it or actually sort of oh. in the gap between two books. Oh, so like this is like the epicenter of it. I'm not struggling. I'm not going to struggle bus here. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, you, if you're you're following that thread from the piece of paper to a gap between a couple of books on this bookshelf. I see. Then I need to reach for it. I must. And there's know. a whole slew of threads going out from there beyond where you are standing. Then I'm gonna. You said it's a gap, or it's a specific book. It's just the you know the space between two books on a bookshelf. I'm gonna put my arm in there and hope I don't get bit. Yeah, you'll have that to pull is... one of the books out to make okay, room. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. And you'll be able to see that all of these threads are sort of, uh, they sort of coalesce into a space on the back of this bookshelf. They just sort of all, there's a whole lot of activity going on in the back of that bookshelf. We need to um, move this bookshelf. Which... Yep. And just Just for the flavor of it. When uh, Aste leaned over and looked over the railing to the stairs mm -hmm. and then disappeared, Maya was just like, "Oh God! Oh, is that how people feel when I accidentally talk in their head? I should, I should." Read. You know, yeah. as like a feather falls out of the sleeve. And nobody else can see what Aste is seeing. By the way, right. you just he, see him pull a book looks, off the shelf. He just looks schizo right now. <laughs> He's just walking around, blipped to the floor, walked up to a bookshelf, took a book off the shelf. All right. Well, um, I suppose uh, we'll work on, uh, I assume there's something behind this bookshelf and we got to move it. So you I'm thinking are 
Yeah, you are also clearly seeing other things because your eyes aren't just focused here. You've detected other things. Yes, but it's focused here. Uh, I'm thinking well, that there are many, many threads. And they're all this prismatic energy again. I'm thinking our, our, our goal lies behind this. Well, uh, Is the bookshelf against a wall, or is there another bookshelf behind it? Bookshelf against a wall. Oh, boy. Yep, okay. this is a secret door. This is a secret door like in my children's <laughs> stories. Okay. Um, let's gently attempt to move this bookshelf. Uh, my guess... And follow me on this, Aste, in case I'm crazy. Um, you all are, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> threads from the page you're currently holding are leading back here, but you're also seeing other pages come from elsewhere. Pages. Other threads come from elsewhere and go here. Do you think those might be other pages? I think they are all things inducted with the energy that is forcing people to buy things. Do you remember that right. prismatic energy I was talking about? I yes. have a I have a hypothesis that this is some sort of soul energy that's taking the emotions and ability and the life from these kids Oof. and it's inducting those feelings into the art pieces through the school to gain them monetary value. Well, let's pray it's not killing the kids. Either way, uh find not we we found the main thing, but uh, maybe find where those threads are coming from and hope that some of them are in this room? There are far too many. And I will reiterate that there are way fewer that match the one that's coming from the paper in your hand than there are of that silvery right. purple color. Right. There's only five also, of the yellow ones. Oh. I'm also all... <sighs> Wait. You need to find uh... the yellow ones first? All the, all the yellows are probably coming from There pages. are multiple pages. I, yeah. see what, I see what's happening here. Yeah, okay. so... I don't have the duration, I don't think, on... I'm pretty sure Detect Magic lasts 10 friggin' minutes. Yeah, but can we find all these pages in 10 minutes with only me guiding? Let's run. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I guess start running. <laughs> Does no one else have Detect Magic? It's um, 10, 10 minutes, yeah. yeah. And nobody yeah, else think... has the spell? I don't have it prepared. I do, I do, I do, because it's part of Fear Bowl, I think. All right, we'll do what we can, and then we'll let uh, Dusk go yeah. next. And I'm going to just start okay. running after one of these pages. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. So you're instead of moving the bookshelf, you are running down one of the yellow threads? I figure we should at least coalesce all the yellow threads first, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Because I think uh, one of them. So this circular library you're in has stairs around behind the bookshelves uh, that lead up to the top, so, like, uh, sort of like the stairs at the Cerulean View. There's a staircase on either side. You had just come down the staircase on the right, and one of the other threads goes up the staircase on the left. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so then I will follow that one first, yeah? We'll yeah, follow you follow first. that one back up the stairs, and there is a uh, bookshelf up there. Uh, there's a really, really thick book on the very top shelf of one of the bookshelves. Mm -hmm. Something about poetry. Something about poetry? Yeah, and there's one of the threads goes straight to the spine of that book. Uh, I will open the book and start scanning through for any more of these glyphs. It won't open. It won't open. You have open. the book in your hand. You have the book in your hand, and the thread stays with the book. Uh, then I don't have the time on my detect magic. I'm gonna just take the book. <laughs> yeah, take the book. Cool. And I'm gonna bring and it. And then uh, dash back downstairs and pick another thread because now two of them lead to Aste. Two of these threads now lead to you. A third one goes out of the library toward the classroom where you met Winnie. Oh, jeez. And oh, I'm yeah, going to say gonna that of your, yeah, of your 10 minutes, you would have followed one downstairs, had two minutes of chit-chat trying to figure out what's going on, mm -hmm. Augie and you deciding, oh, maybe we should hunt down these yellow ones. One minute to get upstairs, grab that book, and come back down. So I'd say you've used four of your ten minutes. It's going to okay. take you two minutes 
two more minutes, so you'll get six minutes. You will arrive in the classroom where you all met Winnie. Mm -hmm. And there is a bookshelf in the back of the classroom. Uh, and uh, the tether seems to be pointing at one of the books on the top shelf. Nope, halfway up, a best height bookshelf. Okay. Um, and when you grab that book, the tether doesn't go with the book. It goes into the back of the bookcase. Um, <laughs> how heavy is Maya the is dashing around. Maya is dashing around behind them in case there's heavy shit that she needs to just huck out the way. That makes uh, sense. Gently huck out the way. How heavy is the, <laughs> how heavy is the bookcase? It is a fully laden bookcase. Oh lord. I'm gonna Got some strong I'm gonna, people. I'm I'm gonna upcast catapult to fifth level. And you're just no. gonna <laughs> the bookshelf off the wall? Yes. You're oh, in Lord. a Muriel's classroom. A Muriel no, has followed you in here. I shouldn't, I shouldn't. <sighs> so I'm if you gonna, get the one book Muriel off the go. shelf, she's gonna come up and go, What are you doing? What's I need to get behind on? this. I need to get behind this bookcase swiftly, swiftly. Swiftly, swiftly. Okay, and so she leans past you and goes to grab as many books as she can lift off of the shelf you have pointed at. And mm -hmm. as she leans to get pressure to compress them and grab five books at once, you hear a click and she pulls the books down off the shelf. <laughs> oh, like they all connect together as she moves them? She picks up these five books, but as she leaned forward and pressed against them to gather them together, there's a secret. I say heard heard a clicking sound as she walked away with the books. I'm gonna look where she pulled them. Like, can I move the bookshelf now? Is this a thing? Uh, um, let's I'm use assuming one more. Yeah, let's use one more of your minutes. So you're up to seven minutes. Okay. To investigate the bookshelf itself, that shelf she was doing, and you realize that if you push on the back, oh well, let's roll an investigation check and find out if you can realize. Yeah. You've uh, already determined there's something here. Um, you know what's funny about that? I think uh, my lower hall primary. Oh, no, it does not. I thought it was investigation. It's not. Okay. Is that a? No, that's not on that one. Oh, God, that's a 17. It's so dark. 17? Cool. Hold yes. on. 17, 18, uh, 19, and plus 4. 17 so and some. 23. 20 something, yeah. So as you're rub running your hand along the back panel of the bookshelf, you do feel now a slight lip, like there's a crack in it or something. And if you just press, it goes kutunk and it pops <sighs> open. Uh, and there's a there. little hidden, a little hidden panel back there, um, and it pops open and reveals a small little niche in the wall that contains a simple little uh, leather scroll case decorated with vines. Cool. Shall I assume and that's the, our winner? The thread, yeah, the thread leads directly into that scroll case. Yoink. Scroll case, no. book, piece of paper. Chop, chop, chop. You got three minutes left. And so, um, it's going to run out. Uh, I got to get you to a different Snaps map. will tell him to follow a thread. And she's going to try to investigate the first bookcase. Because she just saw him fuck around with that one. And something was inside the bookcase and didn't need to be moved. So she's going to tell him to follow another thread. And she'll investigate the first bookcase. So you've gone back to the library. It's the first bookcase that we were at. In, back in the library where the everything panel. coalesced. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to leave you there for a minute because he has three minutes okay. left on his spell. Yep. And he is going to come out of... Are you all still zoomed in here? Trying to be, yes. He's going to come out of... Am I on the right layer? Yes. 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 Okay. He's going to come out of a murals classroom and he's going to walk or run. Uh, I will actually. Um, Along pull this an way. Oh, no, I can't. I can't. I was going to answer this. And through the cafeteria that way. And somewhere along that path, oh. 
the spell is going to die. And oh, no. You will no be... longer be able to see. I was going to say, I was going to use nope. uh, Long Strider. What does which, that do for you? Uh, I touch a creature. The target speed increases by 10 feet until the spell ends, which is an hour. So I also your could, normal... uh, probably get a little further. So hold on, what I could also do then is on top of that, I could uh, I could Blade Song and that increases my move speed by 10 feet too for a minute. So your movement becomes 30, 40, 50 feet. Yep. And, this and I could dash. Well, yeah, 30, we assume you can dash. 60. Oh, okay. So 60. 60. So the uh, I change ink color to help us. That spot is about 180 feet from a Muriel's classroom. So another 180 feet will get you to uh, the other end of this pink line. So 180 divided by 50 feet per six seconds is 3.6, so it's 18, four times six, 24 seconds. So yeah, you could definitely get to the other end of that line. Ooh. Cool. cool. Um, there's well a minute or two used up while you were, you know, fucking around with the bookshelf. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you find this one, but it is going to die before you yeah. get to the next one. Um, there is a kitchen pantry. Uh, there is flour, there is sugar, and one of the threads goes up between the flour and the sugar. Okay. <laughs> Guess I'm getting flour on myself. <laughs> so you take down a bag of flour, and behind the sugar, you see just the corner of a little golden uh, rectangle cube box something. Mm. Tucked in behind, and it's behind like the third bag of sugar back. So it's way, way back there on the top shelf. Jeez. Okay. All right. I guess I'll just take that and make my way back, uh, back to the yeah. uh, library. And what you have retrieved is a flower and dust covered puzzle box. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like it's gold. Uh, it has some intricate flowers carved on the side, mm -hmm. and there will be a check in order to solve the puzzle. Okay. And the last one, somebody else is going to have to detect magic to find it. Oh, that could be Dusk. Dusk, that's you. Dusky boy. Moon bro. Moon bro. <laughs> Are you there, Will? I hear you Sarah in the background here. Oh, I think you're hearing your echo. Mm. Uh, well, if they are talking, they've physically muted their mic and we uh, kind of hear them. Roll 20, just crap. Going on. Impression. What happened? Uh, well, it's funny it crashed on me, but it's back now. Should I kick I him out of the room? Hmm. If that makes him come back in the room, I try a private. I just need to reload, probably. Oh, there he there is. There we go. We can hear you now. So, did you hear all of that? No, I didn't. What did you miss? What did you last thing you heard? I don't know. Hello? You don't know. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to determine what was the last thing you heard. I don't remember. Okay, Aste has found four objects. The piece of paper, well, Maiev found the first piece of paper. 
Aste okay. found three more things. So you now have four objects, and his spell ran out of juice while he was standing in the pantry in the kitchen collecting a puzzle box. Okay. So he'll tell you that there is one more yellow thread, but he can't see it anymore. Okay. If I went to where he was and cast Detect Magic, would I be able to see it? You would see that he has a bunch of objects in his hands that have this weird yellow glow on them, and there are these strings of yellow magic peeling out from his hands back toward the library. Uh, oh, so and he will tell you... Dusty. Huh? Sorry, yelling at the cat. Oh, and he will tell you that when he was back in this, uh, in the main part of the kitchen, that there was a side door over, changing color, changing color, over here, uh, uh, off the side of the cafeteria, one yeah. of the tether, one yellow tether went that way. Okay. Well, I guess and I would follow so that. You're going to head back out of the pantry and you'll see the tether from the library through the cafeteria toward this door. You could go out through that door. And uh, you've got 10 minutes, and it's going to take you uh, 60. How fast do you move in a turn? I mean, 30 feet. Unless I'm hustling. So, You're dashing, I, I... so 60 feet? Yeah. So that is... Mm. Five. I'm 60. So it's essentially going to take you five turns. Five times six seconds. Half a minute, yeah. Half a minute. So you're going to run like fucking hell, facing this thread along this path over to here. Can you, I don't even know if I'm showing you. Yep, I saw what you were doing. Okay, so, you know, following around, and you end up in uh, what appears to be a graveyard. <laughs> of course. Uh, there, are only, there are only five or six headstones. Uh, they uh, all say, um, uh, I've forgotten his last name. Farid? Hold on. Is it Farid? Um, yeah. They all say Farid. One of them actually says Jamal Farid. Um, and the little thread lands, uh, po points directly into the middle of that gravestone. Sort of in a downward oh trajectory. Like, it, if your cat friend might be curious, he might look behind the gravestone to see if it comes out the other side and finds that it does. And there's you, it goes into the ground right behind the gravestone. Mm. Talking about so not into where the body is, but behind the headstone. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's... oh yeah. no, sorry. That's not Jamal's headstone. Uh, that one just says Mother Farid. Oh, sorry, Ma. We're digging behind your headstone. Yeah, Mother Farid. Well, at least it's not the body itself. <laughs> All right, here we go. And he uh... seems very comfortable in a graveyard. Is already digging. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, less than I don't know twelve inches down. There is, uh, you feel this clink, you run into something metal, uh, and it'll take you uh, quite a bit of time to unearth this thing uh, that appears to be a scroll case, uh, but it's made of metal. Um, heavy metal scroll case buried under the shade of a willow tree behind Mother Farid's gravestone. So there you go. So uh, now you've got all five objects. You know where those threads lead to. So even though the spell is going to die off, 
you know where all of those yellow threads went. And now uh, I gotta right. take this crap off the map. Let's, uh, shall we? Uh, in the remaining few minutes and throughout that entire process, both Dusk and Aste saw those silvery purple threads branch off and come together again in a myriad of ways, but the majority of them went out toward, uh, out of the library in this direction and this direction. And a small few went out this way and this way, and a few more went this way, and a few more went this way, and just one or two went that way. So they spread out all over the school, but they did seem to cluster on this path, dormitories, this path, and this path. Like it's connecting oh, yeah. the students to whatever is behind the original bookcase. Yeah. So if if oh. you followed some of those purple ones before the thing died, you would have seen that one of them led to a student who was um, sitting in a garden somewhere sculpting a or drawing charcoal drawing of a flower or something they were studying. And that silvery purple thread leads to the piece of paper that student is working on. So now you've all returned to the library. Yes? Yep. Cool. What are we doing? We're standing in the library with a bunch of objects and this piece of paper. We want to investigate the objects first and then the bookcase. Was that a statement or a question? A statement to the group. We want to look at the objects first. Yeah. Cool. Well, Aste's got a book that he can't open. I want to open it though. I don't have knock uh. though. I have. I said <laughs> I want to open it, but I don't have knock. <laughs> I, I am more than willing to brute force open a book. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, oh, did anybody, were you Aste in the graveyard? Yeah, I joined everyone. Did anybody look at those um, um, uh, gravestones and comment on the names? I don't know. Nabs probably would have since that's, you know, her thing. True. She did say Dead she people. did say out loud, sorry, Ma. Yeah, Ma's not gonna do it though. Riggs, please stop trying to eat my bracelet. I know it has dangly bits, but please stop. Hmm. I, I mean, other than saying that they were all Farids. Yeah, if you said Farid out loud, the book will open. Uh, oh. So you couldn't open it before, but after having been in the cemetery for some reason, it now opens. Oh. Uh, okay. And all of the pages sure, are blank cool. except for uh, one little see-through piece of paper slips out of it with an arcane sigil written on it. Mm. Just going to get that out of the way here. <laughs> ah. Mm -hmm. It all... I think I have exactly the idea of what's happening. Coming here. together. <laughs> and this was perhaps this perhaps this isn't so board. amateur after all. And um, there was a it's the leather bound scroll case. leather scroll case. You could just pop that open, and a little piece of paper flies out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And like like 
you can you can tell Austin's giddy about this. Ooh, it's He's so much fun. Giddy about this. Um, metal scroll case. Uh, it takes a little a muscle. Box. It won't. It's yeah. It's a heavy metal scroll case that's kind oh. of rusty. Okay. You you might need some muscle to get that sucker open. I, I, it. I hand it to the the, the muscle. <laughs> Muscle. Uh, do me a strength check greater than five. Not that greater hard. than maybe. Five. Yeah. So as long as I don't, I don't get a natural one. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. Well, that's good because I got a three, so seven. Seven. <laughs> Very nice. And uh, finally, there is a golden the puzzle box, box. with with uh, intricate flowers on the side. Oh, Somebody's going to have to try and figure out how to open that or be very dexterous. Uh, I would like to give it a it's puzzle shot before we use our uh, sleight of hands and such. Would you? Oh, Briggs, if you insist on biting my headphone string, I will not allow you to sit in my lap while I play D and D. Mm. So, what would be the mind-based check for this? Uh, intelligence, uh, investigation. Investigation, okay. Do my usual. You get a one? That's a one. Not, a, not a natural one, but one of my guidance. 18. 18? Mm -hmm. 18. Yep, you are able to solve the puzzle. Heck yeah. And out comes this other piece of paper. Oh. Speeding through, <sighs> speeding through. And I think Foggy again. Like visibly like, this was your idea, remember? Never take that away from yourself. <laughs> your mic's muted if you're talking. I'm just a country hobo cleric, but I'm, uh... I'm, I'm not exactly... Oh, yeah, you first. Uh, no, that, this seems a little more... Uh... Wizardry. Yeah. Definitely more wizardry than the skull wants us to know about, which is enticing. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly a, a ballsy person who goes out of his way to up-talk all of the positive things, but I, yeah, I, I, I felt it was a good idea, which is why I suggested it. Oh, I'm, I got us yeah. here. Or I wasn't yeah. thinking about it, so we'll never hold that against yourself. Of course. <laughs> Now then. Oh, as you get all these pieces of paper nested on top of one another, the moment it all lines up, the yellow fades. Oh. Oh. There's still oh, all those silvery that. purple threads, but the, the, oh, nobody could see that at this. Well, Dusk might still be able to see it, depending on how fast y'all walked back to the library and filled it with the papers. Dusk might be able to tell you that the yellow seems to be gone now. The yellow seems to be gone now. <laughs> oh. 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 Let's get this bookcase mm. open, shall we? <laughs> yeah. What does the... What does the sigil mean, Aste? Now that oh, it's more yeah. completed. Oh uh, well, it it was amateur enchantment before. May I make another Arcana check? But, yeah, now that you have all the pieces together, let's have another check. Let's see if I, can I would say. This oh, oh. is rather unfamiliar shit. It's not looking like, oh, I saw this in my primer. This is looking a little odd. 32. Uh, a little different. 32. We're <laughs> able to figure it out. Uh, this is definitely something to do with sleep. It has something to do with paralysis. It has something to do with entrapment. It has something to do with continuous mm -hmm. and bolstering energies and magic. Oh, boy. So sleep paralysis control? Uh, yep. Trap 
Entrapment yeah. is a good one. Uh, and bolstering magic and enhancing magic. Okay. This definitely has some importance to our situation. <clears throat> Let's get behind that bookcase, that first initial um, one. I would say that although Dusk saw the yellow disappear, you didn't hear or see anything else happen. The yellow just disappeared. That's mm -hmm. a fair point. No, that was, oh. those yellow lines were likely just a fail-safe for anyone. Uh, that's probably why magic's banned here in the first place, so that people don't realize that. Mm. Right. Yeah, this is probably that was probably just a hearing to get whoever knew all the, who was in the know to getting these together if they needed it. All right. Well, uh, We've just bypassed so, that because we don't care about the rules. So are we thinking this Farid guy put something or someone to sleep and is using their magic to do this thing to the students? No, I'm thinking this is the magic affecting the students. It's a rune regarding that. Mm. So the magic is cajoling the students, and she leans over to yes. whoever's closest to it. Did I use the word right this time? You I, did. I actually think so, yes. <laughs> well done. Yes, cool, I because I still don't know what the fuck it means. <laughs> now, what I'm, what I'm curious about, though, is how this pertains to this prismatic soul magic that they're trying to, to use. Yeah. Let's... That's that's what I want to know about. So let's, anyways, let's not yeah. sit here. Investigate we're the burning, bookshelf now. Yeah, we're burning we're, moonlight. We're, we're burning, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I let's poke uh, around the bookshelf. Cool. Investigate the bookshelf. Yeah. My Ev's got a crowbar. <laughs> My Ev's got a crowbar. My Ev's been walking around um, two-handing the crowbar like it's an axe, <laughs> just waiting to pry something. By all means, My Ev, use your crowbar to move this bookshelf. Well, well, uh, well. Now, to be fair, she has a crowbar in one hand and the wand of secrets in the other. Ah, my <laughs> mistake. Ah, well, use whichever one you'd like at this moment. I mean, I'm thinking secret. It's not all that secret anymore. With after all these people have been pointing at the bookshelf, going, "Hey, the magic goes in there." <laughs> she tucks the wand away and just drops the crowbar and tries to yank the the bookshelf out of the way. <laughs> All righty, strength check, please. Only because it's fun to roll dice this time, and because you only got a seven earlier. <laughs> oh, that's much better. Uh, the, this bookshelf is way less rusty than that case was. Ah, uh, a hundred and three. That, that's going to be a twenty-two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> twenty-two. Yes. So she gets that book, that crowbar, and she sort of wedges it between the two bookshelves and gives it a good. Uh, and you hear some wood cracking. Uh, and Muriel is like, oh, okay. But you didn't totally ruin the bookshelf. It's just kind of cracked a little bit on the side. But you're now able to get your fingers in there enough to pull that bookshelf away from the wall to reveal an opening in the wall that oh, appears to be stairs leading down into darkness. Oh, or for some of you, airs that you can see clearly down because of your dark vision. <laughs> yeah. So um, the, I would the... also like one more general perception check from anyone who was handling the pieces of paper and the book. Okay. Uh, perception? Not from me. Yeah. I think Dusk was leaving that to the. Uh... Expert. I was, I was as helpful as a natural one. Twenty-three. Mm -hmm. That's um, thirteen plus four plus. Six, yeah, so. cool. <laughs> at at some point, it occurred to you and has apparently fallen out of your mind. But when you finally did get that book of poems open, uh, the piece of paper fell out. Um, but your 20-something perception, you realize that it may have actually been torn from the book and then tucked back in the book. Oh, like it, 
the one of the rough edges looks like maybe it matched the torn okay. edge of a page inside the book, just so you know, it, okay. that piece of paper may have been torn from that book at some point. Okay, so uh, a big gaping opening down. It is 1122. How are we doing, Sarah? <laughs> Sarah? I cannot hear Sarah. Oh no, she she's bowed out. She's in too much. Oh, time. I didn't realize she left altogether. So we're just going to run without her. Yeah, just she, she's been just at this point. We can just kind of finish this, and she'll be better hopefully next time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she, she needs to lay down. Um, sciatica is terrible. So, yeah, sciatica is absolutely awful. terrible. I have uh, almost broken a ceramic tile due to my sciatica once. Do we have a small uh, loose object for any of us who doesn't have dark vision? <clears throat> um, I, can get dark vision. I can grant dark vision, need be. I have light. I, I wouldn't wait. I don't know if you want to have it except film. for Rasa. Yeah, I can give. Uh... Okay, that'll that'll give us a more stealthy approach too. We don't have to have actual light. Yeah. It's... While we figure out the fine Four points people. of dark vision, the bookshelf that I damaged? Just a tiny bit. Just just a tiny bit, and it freaked out the teacher. So I'm just, okay, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I run my hand over it, and I'll do mending, and I'll fix it. Okay, cool. <laughs> she feels much better about that. Uh, she yeah, also done. looks very nervous about these stairs and says, um... I, I, I've been you are staying following here. along, but I'm gonna be yes. Up stay here. here. <laughs> if, if we'll clear the space, either first. stay if here or safe, go somewhere else. Yeah. If it's safe, we'll call you down. If it's not safe, we'll be back up whenever it's safe. And I hold up a cool. thumb. And she goes and sits on a cushy chair next to a little table and picks up a book and pretends to try to read it. Cool. <laughs> Uh, you have four yeah. willing people with dark vision. Wait. I have four of the six of you, of the seven of you. How many of you are there? One, two, uh -huh. three, four, five, six. There are seven of you. And so who needs it? Including needs Rasa makes seven. Yeah. So Rasa would get it. Who the hell's missing? Samity? Samity is, is back at the hotel. It? Uh, no. Rasa doesn't have a thing in the chat because she's on the same call as Dusk. One, two, three, right. Four, so five, Rasa, you're, and Dusk, you're not. Yeah, you're not a team member, DM. Oh, I'm in here. So yeah, there's six of you. Okay, I'm so tired. <laughs> okay. Oh, the six of you. Can everybody see down into the darkness now? Uh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, well, I I'm pretty right sure here. I have. Applied everybody's dark vision correctly. Yeah, I mean, for me, yeah. Given it's the same screen for me and us, it's yeah hard to yeah. separate. <laughs> but that's okay. Okay, cool. And Aste, did I give you dark vision? Let me look. This dynamic lighting. You can see sixty feet because that's what you're born with. Great. Okay, cool. Make this go away. And so, wait until dwarves have 120 so. feet of dark vision. Okay. Uh, so there you are uh, at the top of the stairs. And uh, you're welcome to do with what you will with oh, your tokens. God damn it. Yeah. I right. request before we delve into this a bio break. Yes. Everybody go pee. Mom, take your meds. Oh, shit. I'm going to go take my meds. You all go pee. <laughs> yep. I don't I don't be anymore. It's somewhat true. Mm. What? It's just unfortunate. It's fine. I don't really care. It's funny more than anything. You know what I really don't do anymore is eat. I don't think I've eaten today. Yeah. And the taste right. better. <laughs> Go, 
Okay, what was the Top Gun image for? Am I the only one back? I'd never left, but uh, I oh. put it there just because I feel like I'm helping and I feel good about it. Oh. <laughs> I was successful at a thing! I had a 32. <laughs> that was like 20 plus... What was it? It was like... Oh, it was plus... a natural 20 plus yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was a natural 20 plus my arcana is already plus a lot. I don't fucking know, man. It was a lot. It was really good. I might have rolled with the wrong modifier. I don't know. but No, no, no. That's right. It's plus 8 on my arcana. I should, you know what I should do one of these days is I should get expertise on that. That sounds really funny. <laughs> I roll a, like, mythical 40 on Arcana. I think Zephyr has expertise in Arcana. She's got a plus 14. That's funny as hell. But I, I would get a plus 12 in it at the point if I took her expertise. But do I really She's just a druid. Long? She doesn't have maxed out intelligence. But do I want to bust a feed on it, though, is the question. All right. Back. Did we enjoy my jigsaw puzzle? I loved it. Was it. Cute. Yes, it was fun to make. That was nifty. Didn't take y'all long to figure it out. Woo. I don't think we're all back yet. I hear feet behind me. I hear police. <laughs> Gregory just shushed me. <laughs> you should never shush your mother. Even worse, shushing the DM. <laughs> Here, try these. Pea butter. Oh yeah, give me two for one. Yeah. Pea butter. There you go. I offered one. <laughs> My neck hurts. Okay, so with the return of Gregory, are Hello. we all back? Are we all here? Yes. Roll call. Maiev. You. Nope, Maiev's not back yet. You, you sniped the one who's not back yet first, so that was cool. He's muted. <laughs> I guess I should have known her being muted indicates she's not back yet. Also, my tablet died, so now I have my character sheet up on my computer. You have two monitors up there. Unfortunately, no, I don't. One of the HDMI ports inside of this thing isn't actually connected to the uh, graphics card, so it doesn't work. Oh, no. Yeah. When I upgrade this PC, which is happening soon, I'm going to uh, rectify that. Because both of your monitors require HDMI, you don't 
one of the monitors can't be done with a USB. Correct. I don't think I've ever I'm heard so of a sorry. monitor taking USB. <laughs> I think all yeah, three of one of my monitors does. is USB. Wait, no, I have no. both of mine are HDMI now, but I used to have one USB and one HDMI. Really? I've never heard of yep. a monitor taking USB. That's kind of funny. It was pretty cool. I had three monitors going at that point. <laughs> I have three monitors going now because one of them is the laptop screen. Are you back yet, Maev? <clears throat> you're still muted if you're back. I'm here. Oh, come on. What is Ashley Burris doing? Sorry, I'm what? back now. Okay. She's back now. So, uh, y'all have to decide who's coming down the stairs first. Probably my Ev. She's ready to kill something. And who's, con uh, I guess, Dusk is controlling, Will is controlling Rasta's pup. Yep. Yeah, as always. Rasta would be directly behind my Ev. Oh, oops. That was a mistake. I only see a black screen on the roll screen. <laughs> Well, move your puck whenever you get to approach the stairs. I don't have a puck. There's only a black block. Oh. And the top <laughs> puck isn't visible? Nothing is visible. It's a black square. <laughs> Did you this forget so to give weird. him vision of his touch? He's got 60-foot night vision. Yeah. Maybe if I say Did he you... emits light... One foot, can he see himself? How about I now? I don't see a thing. No. Does he have control of his puck? I was going to say, do I have... Control, details. Not quote owner nope, name. for some reason, he does not have control of his puck. Hardy, hardy, hardy. Controlled by... Oh. Uber Tato? Uber Tato. E R T, it's not coming up. U B R T A T O. Yeah, <laughs> it's not letting me put you in control of it. <laughs> it hates me. It's fine. Oh, oh, I got it! I got it! I got it! Oh, Uber Tato. Uber Tato. Safe. Hey, he's got a puck. Hey. Okay, doing a little dance. All right, so. There you go. You got a room. Go in the room. Let other people into the room. Stop blocking the stairs. There she goes. I'm going to assume Rasa is on your tail. Yeah. And Maya is like, everything is out. She is ready to murder anything that is damaged any of the children that have ever been here. Okay. So. Just because light bring her out. Cool. Assemble and you get in the room. This room looks like it's seen a lot of combat. Oh, I thought those were spider webs. <laughs> Uh, no, those look but like they're black, so the maybe stone. not. They look like cracks in the stone from like powerful hits. No, there's there's yeah. some spider webs in there. There's there's spider webs and shit. There's all kinds of shit going on. Uh, there is an old workbench in the corner over here. There's a desk over here. A couple of cabinets that probably have shit in them, and. Uh, I'm going to ask you to stop moving around now while I okay. describe these are all bookshelves covered in books and knickknacks and trinkets and whatnot. Uh, so this, not pianos like I thought they were. This is an elevated area like a, a stone plinth. Oh, and on it is a glass cuboidal box. And in the glass cuboidal box, you see a uh, 
this guy. <laughs> oh, okay. Lay in there. <laughs> in the box. Looking all sleepy and shit. You sleeping? Yes. Uh, it, it looks very Snow White in the coffin situation. It's a glass coffin. So, right. <laughs> Foggy. And that dude is in there. Foggy. And uh, as soon as Maev or Aste get to where they are currently depicted, um, some shit's going to happen. Oh. But I have to find it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Love thing. that. It's a thing. It's a thing. So who's going to kiss him and wake him up? Yeah. This, 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 this goes cool. over here. It's kind of an ugly mug, don't you? Uh, so let's see. Uh, Maev entered the room first. In your yeah, head. Yeah, she would have. Yeah, in your head, you heard, who are you? Who, 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 what are you? Why do you look different? What? You look different. Why do you look different? And then I'll stay in your head as you get close enough to the box. You hear, um, you're not from here. You're very different. You're different from all of them. Why are you different? You're very different. And do you, do you feel things on the inside? And then Foggy will hear a voice in his head that can you... I don't understand why are you in here? Because nobody comes in here. It's just me in here. Well, me and him in here. What are you doing? Are you? What are you doing in here? What do you want? And so there's this voice coming and peppering you all with constant questions. And Maev's response would have been out loud. Um... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I, I know I pinned it somewhere. Well, she would have answered with the oath. The question was, why do you look different? And you answered with the oath. Well, no. The first question was, who are you? Oh, that's true. And the oath is kind of long. Uh, so is, while you are long. reciting the oath, Foggy is hearing questions, and then Rasa hears a question, and then Foggy hears a question, and eventually you're all being peppered by questions. Mm -hmm. So prob probably... Uh... It would have been like the the meat of the oath. When when it peppered me with "Who are you?" It would have been the light liberating the little, the shield sheltering the small, and the hand hammering hammering the harmful. As she like rears back with her axe, getting ready to just demolish this fucking coffin and whatever is in it. So you rear back with your axe while you're reciting. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, does anybody else want to respond to their questions before the next thing happens? Uh, yeah, I will tell them that I do feel things on the inside. Just to get a reaction. What kind of things? 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 Augie, did you respond to your questions? Uh, yeah, I do, and it is much less kind. He would say, do yourself a favor and get out of my head. It's not a nice place to be. Not out loud. Oh, dear. Internally. Internally, well, it got heard. Okay. So, and this chair disappears. I was about to comment moment, that that chair looked a little big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in that moment... Oh, it's back. The chair is back? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oops. Let me try that again. Oh god, it's a it oh god, Elenia twitches. Elenia. 
into a DM DM layer token layer chair goes to the GM layer. And then I go to the GM layer. And I get rid of the fucking chair. And I move this to the Except token the layer because it looks like this. Oh no! Oh! Ooh. This appears in where the chair was. Uh, well, doesn't that I... just look lovely? It looks very lovely. And uh, Maev is uh, raising her axe toward the coffin. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> that that that's probably going to... Because I have not yet gone into a full rage. That's probably going to spark a knee-jerk magical reaction. What do you mean? Uh, oh god, what the fuck magical reaction? <laughs> uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Well... It's got no face. I'd, I would like to, uh... I would like to preface this with, I'm sorry. Are you going to... So you still have your axe raised toward the coffee, the coffin, when this thing appears. Uh huh. Cool. And uh, let's roll for initiative, please. Let's roll for initiative. <laughs> In D and D Beyond. Nope. I didn't prepare just, that. Just roll. Just, just regular. <laughs> Pardon. I did a good. Natural 20 plus one. Unpleasant candle keep members. Did it, did it, did it, did it, 21. Dirty 20. Oggy. That's a... Uh... Uh, I'll stay your dex compared to my dex. My dex? Oh, I have it here. His dex is higher than yours. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All righty. So... Um, I'm going to, oh, shit. shit. I'm going to rewrite all of this. So we have snaps is 21. Lair is 20. Augie is 20. Faceless creature is 19. Aste, 18. Maiev, 18. Dusk, 11. Rasa, 8. Did I get all that right? That yeah. Right. Cool, cool, cool. So, uh, Snaps, you heard some question or other in your head questioning why do you look different or is that fur? How come you have fur? Uh, and why are your ears decorated? What does that decoration do? Um, and Maiev is in front of you and about to smash this glass coffin with an axe. And uh, as soon as her axe gets above her head and like she's clearly revving to go with the axe, the chair disappears, this smoky-faced creature appears, and all of the peppering questions stop. And Snaps gets to act first. Um, they don't do any... Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, and Snaps is gonna move. Um, five, ten... Uh, kind of putting herself between 
Maev and the body question mark and <laughs> who are you and she's kind of trying to hold out a hand to Maya to stop the axe from coming down <laughs> snaps is still under the impression that something was trapped here and it is being used to harm the children and maybe it doesn't want to harm the children mm. cool um, She's just trying diplomacy. This room is only 60 by 60, right? Pretty sure. Okay. So I'm going to let this first one go off, and then we'll see if your diplomacy helps when it gets to foggy faced guys, faceless guys' turn. But right now, the lair is going to do the lair thing. Yeah, it's 60 by 60. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Okay, so the lair rolled a 21. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wait, it doesn't have to roll. It's a wisdom saving throw. So everybody needs to do a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving. Is this a gas or vapor? No. Come on, where's that tray? All right, where's the tray? Yay, Rasa. And the X comes down on snaps with that four. Okay, so. Oh, no. um, everybody except for snaps and Rasa takes 19 oh. psychic damage. Fuck me. Snaps and Rasa take nine. Lovely. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's nothing. Like, then it's Foggy's bad. turn. So my diplomacy was nothing, nothing. Well, it's just that you are in this space and aggression occurred, and so some shit happened. With just sort of like. How Maev is having trouble not swinging her axe. She was starting to swing her axe, but it's not her turn yet. <laughs> mm. uh, Foggy is going to instinctively want to light his hands on fire, but we're attempting diplomacy, so he's not going to. And he's just going to say, yeah, uh, you're, you're a thing in the basement of a school. And you might be hurting kids accidentally. So, let's talk. And that's my turn. Are you going to move? No, because I'm afraid if I move closer, he'll see it as a threat. So I'm not going to move. Okay. And are you holding an action? And is Snaps holding an action? I'm not gonna. And I'm gonna okay. regret it. Snaps, were you gonna hold an action after you talked, or you just talked? I am trying not to be threatening. I've got a hand up toward Maya and kind of a hand toward that creature, just, and I don't okay. want to be seen as threatening right now. Oh, cool, cool, cool. And Foggy just said, you might be hurting children. What did you say? You might be hurting children accidentally, so maybe let's talk. What are children? Uh, uh, Was that audible? And it's now right up on the, the coffin, and it's got its hands on top of the coffin. Like, it is 
Uh, clearly protecting the glass coffin. Beings that are at the beginning of their life. Thank you. I couldn't come up with good words. Thank you. That, what he said. And the shoulders turn, although there is no head or face to see turn. The shoulders turn toward dusk and go, are they good beings? They're the best. And it'll turn back towards Snaps and say, do they feel things inside? feel lots of things and it's being taken from them. There's a, a pause. This is this is the part if we're are we in are we gonna be doing Yeah we, we can over? drop out of yeah you can all talk freely now. Okay. This is where Oste goes full this guy in mode and starts asking questions right back at him. He's like, oh, cool, cool. So, so what comprises your body? Are you a magical being? If so, what schools comprise you? Why are you here? Are you this guy? And he points at the guy in the coffin. Or are you someone protecting him? Oh, my goodness. No, no. I am not. He's, 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 I, I, he's stuck in there. And his magic, he, he, see, and he gestures toward the stairs, or she, sorry, this creature, male, female, you don't know, mm -hmm. gestures towards the stairs and said, see the magic, it, it was broken, it was failing, and I saw it, and I came and I helped. Do you see the threads? Yes, the threads. Do you see the threads? There were they were breaking and crumbling, and so I've I've stayed, and I've 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 Im imbued them. I made them with... stronger. Ah, does it have anything to do with? And he shows the scroll. This, well, like the pieces of the pieces of paper with like the rune on it or the glyph. What is that? And do these children have... Do they make threads like this? And he turns toward Ratha and says, do these children creatures make threads of magic? <laughs> I think Ratha would sort of like shrug her shoulders and look over at like Snaps or Asta or Dusk. And she's like, I not, not like that, no. And you are able to discern that it doesn't know what that piece of pile of paper is. Hmm. But see the threads, they were crumbling. And this poor creature, his 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 threads were crumbling, and I saw them and I felt something. I felt something. I are felt these, are these something. Threads? Tell me what you feel. Are you not used to feeling things? I don't, I didn't know what a felt was until I felt a thing. And it was, it was unpleasant. And this creature For feels you. things. This creature, I, I experience is I feel think, I think I have an is idea. sad. So you Our, felt so Snaps has slowly walked around the coffin. So Yeah. And this creature is having a real sad. hard time finding language for feelings and is trying to wade through what clearly this some other language going on. And you know, there's a struggle for communicating, but you, you get the gist of what's happening. Okay. So, so yeah, Snaps is slightly entering grief counselor mode here. So wait, have you been keeping this person alive? But I, no, I I made his his threads be strong. That's all. I made his threads be strong. But what are the threads? What do they symbolize? They come from him. Specifically? 
they are his threads. I, I don't know what they are for. They just come from him and they were disintegrating. And so I just filled them in for a long time. Something so tells me, something tells me I think I have an idea of what's going on here. I have a feeling like this person has been siphoning life from the children unknowingly to keep this person alive. That's my guess currently. Yeah, that yeah. Are you guess. saying any of that out loud? Yeah, that's what I'm saying to the group. What's a siphon? What does siphon mean? To take from and to give to another. No, he does not take from. He they go. It goes out. Look at the threads. They go out. Uh, out from him to out. These young out. People. It's taking the feelings and the passion from the students, and it's projecting it onto the artwork. And there is utter confusion with artwork. Like, that is so language that is beyond this creature. And it, she's just going to insist again, no, out. It, the magic goes so out you... from him. Right, it goes out from him and you onto physical felt, objects. You felt what he felt. And Snaps is going to hold out a hand. Can you feel what I feel? There's a moment. Did you touch it? The creature? I'm holding out my hand toward it. I'm I'm not okay. trying to I'm, touch it great. against its will. So it's gonna lift a hand off the coffin and just put its hand down on the back of your hand. And it's gonna say You have it too, just like him. It's quaky inside. Like wiggle, squiggle, quakey inside. A heartbeat? Hmm. Oh, well, yeah, they both have that like me too, but I have a heartbeat. It's, it's a, a, it's a wiggle, squiggle, quakey shiver inside. A soul? It's a feel. Maev has fear, nervousness, boy. and fear. <laughs> it's trying to describe uh, nervousness and fear. Right. And Snaps is going to try to will herself to feel warmth and curiosity toward this being. Worry for the kids, but warmth um, and curiosity toward this creature. <laughs> Let me have a concentration, or uh, is it constitution? Let's do a constitution check to see if you can control your emotions. And maybe Maya could help myself? with that. Yes. I think we have passed the 24 hours. Mm. It's pretty close. Um, well, that's a 23. Yeah, you're definitely able to marshal your feelings and you're able to focus in on your, uh, uh, what was it again, caring? Uh, yeah, warmth and, and curiosity. curiosity. Cool. Uh, yes, like that. Yes, yes, like that. And then it gestures to the coffin and it gestures to its own chest and it gestures to the coffin and its own chest and says, yes, like that, just like that. <laughs> yes, yes, Mayev, that's exactly what uh, would be happening if that little boy was in this room. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Aste never met that little boy, so that joke is just over his head. Oh, yeah. Um... I don't know what to do about this. Children um, are good, kind, happy, 
Yeah, usually. Yeah. And his threads are hurting children? Yes. It's, and, um... You feel what I feel? And these feelings are being taken from these children and put into, and she kind of points toward the, the pieces of paper with the, the spell work on it, and it's like put into objects and given away, and then the children are empty inside. They're Feel on the feel. the feel is no more in there. It takes their feel. Oh, I, have a question. I don't think this bad. creature wants that. This creature oh. is good, 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 good inside. What's up, Maya? And Maya see these hands, these threads. I think you need detect magic up to see them, correct? Uh, yeah, everybody else needed detect magic to see them. But maybe at this point, this creature might be uh, having discussed them and been talking about them and gesturing at them so many times that maybe this creature, who genuinely doesn't have a real good skill with their magic, has accidentally made them visible. <laughs> mm. So but no, we're all safe. Yeah. My my Ev is is gonna uh do a thing. What you got there? I'm gonna do what I did at uh in front of Hugo. And I'm just gonna Pull out my uh, red spectrally mage hand thing. And uh, just kind of run the mage hand fingers down the threads and then pinch a couple of them like that. And see what happens. Uh, I think it uh, just is... Uh, Snaps is going to feel a surge in that curiosity feeling uh, that Snaps was having some feelings of curiosity and will suddenly feel an intense curiosity <laughs> come over her as this thing still has its hand on her. Um, and maybe feel a little um, worry come across. The, the worry feeling might peak up a little bit as well. Um, and again, this creature will say, he is, he is good, good inside, all good, good inside. There's no malice. Children. Huh? He made this school, and he wanted the children to learn, but I don't think he would have wanted them to be emptied. A wave of confusion passes over you. Uh, probably partly with the word school and partly with the, word, the phrase made this school. Like, the creature's not quite understanding what that could possibly mean. Language-wise, that doesn't compute. Um, but also, it is growing more and more on the... Uh, there is a an undercurrent of uh, concern and regret welling up underneath all of the emotions that you're getting off of this thing. Like maybe it's starting to experience some form of regret. Mm -hmm. And 
Snaps is not saying anything else, but she is making space for that regret. And it's a feeling of acceptance. And I know it's complex to describe, but hey, it's okay. It's okay. Like you didn't intend this. It's yeah. okay to fuel these things. Uh, he's going to turn to Oste. Mm -hmm. And he's going to say, Do you think this creature would be sad? Whatever version of sad language this creature is able to produce. The would be down inside if I stop helping. It's impossible to tell. But I figure that this isn't the only person with those wiggly, fig wiggly, wiggly, wiggly feelings that matters. Everyone matters to some degree, wouldn't you say? It would be a shame to prioritize one over any other. Especially the children, which of of which there are so many here, and that people set their whole lives aside to protect. Okay. So, unfortunately, when this creature ra lets go of snaps and raises its hands and begins to brush away the threads, they come separated from the coffin. They begin to disperse and float out the st up the stairs. There are still a few very minor tendrils connected to the coffin uh, that are broken and don't quite make it up the stairs. But for the most part, these tendrils all start to fly away. But when that happens, I have to do a thing. You don't really have Including to. Including him. The spell targets. Yep. Meh. It's not an attack. It's a, a, It just fucking happens. Don't save. We're just all going to go with... The lair kicked in, but instead of doing psychic damage, he prevents the lair from doing the thing. And in doing so, I need everybody to roll for me a d4 and tell me if it's odd or even. Not really big on the Wait, sound. One, more, one more time. <laughs> Just roll a d4 and tell me if it's odd or even. Oh, no, no, no. I lied. I lied. I found it. It is just the creature who is physically closest to it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Thank God. Up? Okay. So one creature physically closest to it, I'll which I guess it. you two are equally close to it. So both of you, I need a wisdom save. Nice. Wisdom save. Mm hmm. 15. Um, dirty 20. <laughs> Naps is fine. I'll stay on the other hand. What we got? Did you roll, uh, roll that d4 now, I'll stay? Okay. I think I did roll it earlier. It was a three. It was a three? Yeah. So for the next three days, Oh, good. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to roll a d6 to help us decide which one occurs. Six. And that would be for the next three days. Starting tomorrow morning, when you wake up, you will be female. And it will last for three days. Okay. Which is, I guess, better than having your clothing talking to you all day. Yeah, um, there were lots of things that could have happened. This one, not so much, not so bad. So for the next three days, Aste will have female genitalia. You guys might not notice. 
Uh, but what do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? I mean, you don't hang that stuff out, do you, dude? I mean, I get I'm an elf, but like, come on now. <laughs> as long as you're not wagging it. Okay. So, the threads have dissipated. Uh, something will happen to Aste in the morning, but it isn't happening now. And this creature uh, settles back on its heels and takes a step back from the coffin and says, why does he still sleep? It's natural. It's normal. Those of us with wiggly, feely insides are physical bodies, and she wiggles her fingers. They stop, and then our souls go to another place. Um, you seem confused. Yeah, I was going to cut in at it this says, point. Yeah, it says two snaps. You seem confused. I want to lean real close into this coffin and look very closely Is at he him. not dead? Is he breathing He's in breathing. there? He's breathing in there. He's breathing. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. I thought he was dead. Never mind. <laughs> huh. Um. Now, Aste had shown him, her, it, the scraps of paper. So I'm going to have her, him, it turn to Aste and say, what about your threads? Are your threads bad? Do your th threads hurt the children? My threads do not hurt the children. And I have an extra thread, actually. And he's pointing at what's in your hands as he says, it says, what about your threads? And it's pointing in your hands. Wait, pardon? What do you mean and my it threads? points at the the book and the pieces of paper in your hand and oh. then it points at the coffin and then it points at the book and says what about your threads do your threads hurt him i don't and, um, believe so we have yet to determine what the mom dar check is oh i didn't see mom dar check what was the mom dar check uh, uh mom dar you're like trying to do, to do mom dar i would, I would uh, it's like a form of insight now. Yeah, okay. let's go with insight. Okay. Tell me what um, you're exactly trying to intuit. I'm I'm trying to take the mom experience of a raising a toddler mm -hmm. and connect the dots between it th this creature understanding that we have successfully imparted the knowledge that children are not bad and therefore should be protected. But those threads that this this sleeping dude were putting out were causing harm and it's still seeing threads coming off of the shit in Aste's hands. Asking if those hurt the children. Yep, yep. I'm Your intuition to... is completely accurate thus far. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, step to the right so that I can see the stuff in Aste's hand and um, I would just pipe up and go better safe than sorry. Aste, drop it and I'm going to snap my fingers and do firebolt at it. At what? At the, 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 the scroll the with paper the shit. on it. Honestly, ah, not a okay. terrible idea. Oh, so, Aste drops the book 
and Mayab shoots a fireball at the book, a firebolt at the book. Yeah. We're going to burn the book. Is that a, a saving throw or an attack roll? Uh, it is an attack roll. It is a cantrip. Let's have that. Please don't roll a one. <laughs> okay. How about a 19 for 24? Yeah, you're good. You hit the book. Um, so the cover of the book lights on fire. The sheets that are on top of the cover of the book don't. Oh, they're like but the magical, cover of the book is shit. now. Oh, yeah, the cover of the book is now burning. The well, in that case, can I dispel magic on the book? Or what's left of it, I should say. I will remind you what you noticed about one of the sheets that fell out of this book. It was as if it were put back in. The other way around. It yes. Well, it was like acting as if it's taken yeah, out. Yeah, from, yeah from the, book, book. the book itself seems to be mundane. The scrolls themselves are not. And so yeah. something, something a little bit more... And yeah. the cover of the book is burning. But the page the is, is not. not magic, oh, the but pages the pages aren't? are. And the page... Yeah. Okay. Um, so specifically, I guess I should take Put out the... the fire, tuck the pages back into the book. Close oh, the book. Yeah, yeah oh. that makes sense. Yeah. Well, Reassemble like the book <laughs> is what I, I was trying to hint at. That's fair enough. Yeah. And yeah. yet oh, yeah, still... The dude Bye. is like, see, but and still gesturing as if the threads still exist. You have put the pages back in the book. You've closed the book. What do you think you need to do to fix it? Uh, we don't see the yellow threads anymore. You can't, but like it can, and it's still pointing. You've got the book the closed. You put out the, the fire. To the dude, you've put out the fire. You've stuck shit back in the book that you couldn't open you earlier. Give him his book back. What is what is what is what is hey, what, Farid? No. <laughs> she's got just going to say, start say the guy's name. Farid. <laughs> yeah, Farid. You say the guy's name, and suddenly the book clamps tighter shut and won't open again. And the creature goes, "Oh, okay. No more threads. No threads." And the guy inside the box sort of startles and hands come up and splat hard on the inside of the glass and start pushing up on the glass and you hear a muffled voice. Vortex warp. Huh? Vortex warp. I want him out of the box. We can help him <laughs> without oh, you're breaking the glass. You're, you're teleporting him out of the box without breaking the glass. <laughs> There's a thing you can do to teleport a human outside of the bot? What? You magically twist space around another creature you can see within range. The target must succeed on a con saving throw, or the target is teleported to an unoccupied space of your choice. If if he wants out of the box, he can just fail it. But... <laughs> okay, we'll let him fail it, and you will stand him up where? Uh, we'll, we'll put him, uh, I guess, just right next to me and Snaps on the left there. Cool. Between us and the, the big have... spooky dude. I didn't make a puck for him. So, how about we let this be his puck for now? It didn't go. Let me try that again. There, that's his puck for now. Where did you put him? Uh, I put him right next to me and snaps in between us and the... Yep. Pretty cool, much. cool, cool. And he goes, what the hell is that? And runs into the corner. Vortex warp. So come back here. You. <laughs> come back. And he's totally running away from the big scary monster in the room. I like, this I try to put... Uh, after I teleport him back the second time, I'm going to put a hand on his shoulder and be like, if you move again, I'm going to blind and deafen you. Oh, you brought him over here now? Yeah, pretty much. I teleported him back Okay, in. cool. And I put a hand what on his shoulder and said, what? if you... If you ah, 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 ah. 
they're friendly. Hmm. Hard to believe. I get it. I get it. I, it doesn't get have it. a face, man. Dude, yeah, not everything with a face it needs to have a face to be friendly. <gasps> it's talking in my head. Yes, I know. It did it for all of us, too. Calm down. I know you've been in there for probably how long? Millennium? I don't know. Yeah, let's let's start with that, and then I, I gesture slow, to the but, I, I, I gesture to the thing. Sorry, we're he's now freaked out. Give us a minute. Just um, calm. the biggest important important thing to note is that you're safe. Yeah. Calm down. So just to uh, do, I even want to give him that because God, <laughs> that might that might freak him out more. Screw it, I'm doing it anyways. What year do you think it is? Oh Lord, that was not kind thing to do to your DM. Um, <laughs> um what is what? the current year? Uh, if you if you take us back to the recap, uh, oh wait, no, Naps knows what current year it is. It is fourteen ninety five dr. Fourteen ninety five dr. Sorry. Oh, 65. Oh, wow. That's been a minute. Okay, you, 230 you, 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 years. Oh, I wasn't going to say the number out loud. Mm. Interesting. Okay, I did bad math. Oh, uh-oh. 1365. <laughs> 1365. Okay. 130. So, so 100 years. 130. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. 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 Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's not going to hurt me. A, a little bit of a drop in the oh. bucket, but. <laughs> and his eyes pop a little bit, and he looks over at it. Oh. You I kept me this company. Is this human. Yeah, it's Jamal Farid. It's it, the human that's that that found she, this she, Did you say that out loud? Yeah. Snaps asked. No, I was just snaps. asking if this guy was human. Uh, he does look like Jamal Farid. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in he it, does yeah. look like Jamal Farid by a hundred percent. Um, yeah. but this the the dude from the box that looks yep. like Jamal Farid. Yep. Has sort of had a startle moment and looked over at the thing and said, you kept me company. You've been here a while, too. And then he's staring at it in silence as there's this telepathic conversation happening. And he says, Unquil, what is yours? And what did he say? Again. Oh, un that's not actually Jamal. Oh. He's not talking out loud anymore, is he? He's in my head. She, she's in my head. It's in my head. I'm Unquill, and she seems to have forgotten her name. Oh, and he's looking strange. at it, and then looking at all of you, and then looking at it again. Now I'm very. She, confused. she doesn't. She doesn't seem to have or know her name. She's been with me a while. So you said your name is Unquill? Yes. I thought you and were thank Jamal you, Farid. Thank you for getting me out of the box. Who got me out of the box and woke me up or let me move? It was very scary a long time. Freaking out. Sorry. Hi, I'm Unquill, and you are, and just sticks a hand out to whoever's closest, so off day. Uh, I guess I'll give him a shake. Uh, my name is... <laughs> my name is Ostele Lunari, Servanti Galilari, Sestawi Non Melui Tenu. Thank you. That's a lot. It's Elvin. And not material, but that's its own thing. Uh, uh, 
That was a lot. A lot of <laughs> words and sounds. You can call it Aste. I was Aste, gonna say Maya's thank just you. sitting Aste, cross. Aste, it's very, very the... nice to meet you, and then sticks a hand out to Snaps on Quill, and you are Snaps. And I thought you were Jamal Farid. Oh no. No, no, no. I I see your confusion. I understand it. I I am on Quill. I I am uh is is Arkeen. Is what I, I am Jamal Farid's Marquine. <sighs> Does that word and mean Maya anything is... to any of us? I don't know. Maya's just sitting cross-legged on the glass coffin, thoroughly confused with her. A genie in double. Her hand. You're a genie. Yeah. Well, huh. no, not a genie per se. A lesser form of, but you're still. It's interesting. Yes. That's really I, interesting. It, it is. It is my. I. I had I it, it is rare that a Marquis might meet his Zakaran mirror, but I did. And so I uh traveled with uh Jamal while he developed his opus. Is where is he? Well, I'm sorry to tell you that but the the most likely scenario, unless something even crazier than what has happened is going on here is that they've probably been dead for over a century. And there's this crestfallen look on his face. And then something else passes over a century. Yes. I've been in a box for a century. And it doesn't seem like you've aged, so we have something in common. How old did I say Aste was again? Shit. Oh, I don't remember. remember. Oh, no, no, no. A lot. <laughs> yeah, this dude is... Hold on, I think it's in my uh, description. Let me check real quick. Uh, Background. Uh, characteristics. Oh, 732. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so, yes, Unquill is confused, but, uh, there's a moment of sadness that Jamal must be dead after a hundred years, but also, how did I get in that box? And that I've been in that box for how long? That's exactly the next question I wanted to ask you. So, you guys can try to work it out, or you can just have a conversation with this dude, and he will continue to have conversations with the faceless, nameless creature uh, while you all try to work this out, and I can just read you what you finally figure out, if you'd like. I will just solve the mystery for you. As much as I don't want to pick that section, second option, it is 12.30. It is 12.30, and we have been in Salt and Landing for three sessions. So, yeah. you have met an Enig mirror, which I know Snaps is going to make me type. Oh, mm -hmm. I touched something, and N -I -G -M -I -R. things went awry. R -R -R -R? Yes, E-N-I-G, mirror. Uh, the name and face are lost to time. Uh, they are essentially a banished arched fiend. And uh, it is plagued by curiosity and uh, simply wants to understand shit better. Specifically, the shit involving sentient creatures. And when this dude's threads of his magic began to falter after 70 years of being stuck in a box 
he came and started to bolster that magic just to try and lift it up. But he, she, the Enig mirror, uh, isn't really skilled with magic and their magic is a little otherworldly and very often goes wrong. And so what a Marquine's uh, magic does is inspire. So the original mm -hmm. intent of Unquill, when he was matched up with his Zakaran match mirror, was to inspire him to produce his opus. That was his magical skill. That's what's supposed to happen. He's supposed to inspire his mirror, his uh, Marquine, uh, to greatness, artistically, magically, wonderfully, and then get to go home. That's how that's supposed to work. But our wizard, Jamal, wanted mm -hmm. more. So once he finished his fabulous pa best painting he was ever going to do, he trapped his Marquine in a box with a spell that he got some help from some ancient world Hurlians who are no longer there. Don't get your panties in a twist, Dusk. All of the wizards involved are dead. And this part of the story you people can't figure out because you don't know what happened with Jamal, did what Jamal did. But he had help. And he made this spell and he broke it into the pieces so that nobody could ever undo the spell. And he basically enchanted his Marquine to enhance or inspire all of the students so that their works of art would be more inspired and therefore more valuable to be sold in the gallery that he put a spell on. That's what happened. So Jamal was the bad guy, but he's already dead. Jamal was a bad guy, but not to the he's children. He's already he the was a bad guy to his Marquine. Got it. And the children just got caught in the blast. Zone. We have we have freed yeah, the when... students. We have freed the Marquine. Yeah, <clears throat> it fixed it. And oh. uh, I'm going to say that by the end of this conversation at 12:30 at night, uh, Unquill has grown fond of this unnamed creature, and this nameless creature is very fond of Unquill. And they will develop a uh, an agreement to be together for some time. Uh, but they want to be, uh, Unquill wants to go home. Even though his whole family is dead by now, he wants to go home. And so uh, in the middle of a sentence, the Enigmirror and Unquill disappear. That's a shame. I wanted to ask them about my thread. Your thread? Well, I don't know if I have one specifically, but when uh, I don't know whether there can be like an, a backward silver cord in this sense, but uh, when one astral projects into the astral sea in D&D, they have a silver thread on their stomach, like an umbilical cord. If it gets severed, you get sent ah. back to your body. But I was curious if I had one in the material backwards style because I'm from the astral sea. That's all. But oh. a question for another day. But they're gone now. <laughs> it's also something I wanted to ask if that was something to do with my uh, silver cord ball thing. Mm. No, that's a Hargitis thing. Okay. Well, well. <laughs> so there we are. <clears throat> you guys can Google Enigmira. You can Google Zakara, Z-A-K-H-A-R-A, -A -A, which is a place. And you can Google Marquine, M-A-R-K-E-E-N, if you want to have a better understanding of the shit I built. <laughs> now that it's laid out, I get it. But the whole double and him not being dead really threw me off for a second there. <laughs> it was a little weird. And you could have killed it, by the way. I, I did the math and determined that you could have killed it had you just gone in to kill it. 
you would have had a little more trouble getting Unquill out of the box, but <laughs> well, you could have broken the box, but you wouldn't have got Unquill awake until you figured out the book. Right. Um, oh. Maya, still sitting cross-legged on the glass coffin when they disappear, goes, well, Okay. Oh, that's a thing. Yes, that just happened. Uh, Foggy, when do you want to spar? <laughs> I had a feeling that was the next question. Um, outside of the uh, hotel before we go to sleep. Okay. Cool. Belly brawl time. Five tethers, you found all five tethers. Arkeen or genie doubles were a lesser form. Yeah, yeah, you can Google it. Cool, cool, cool. Enig mirror. I'm struggling to find Enig mirror. E N I G. Look under homebrew on D D Beyond. Ah, okay. Let me do that real quick. Where is my character sheet? Meh, 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 meh. Collections. So are we going to pick up our next session with uh, going back to the hotel and a brawl and role play before bed? Uh, Yeah, it looks like it. Next chapter is get back home by whatever means you've decided to go home. Are we walking home, taking a boat home? Are we going to do fast travel so we can move the story along? What do we want to do? Because I need to know what to write. I don't mind walking, but it is. we should probably get out of the... You still have the uh, horse and cart. You have the yeah. two horses in the cart. However we get out of the the university, we need to get out of there quick because we've been running a lot of moonlight and it's probably soon to be daytime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's assume that once those two disappear, you guys head up to the library, tell Amuriel that everything's fine. You've solved it. It's over. She doesn't have to worry about it ever again. And the children will be fine. Their magical, their uh, artistic skills are unaffected. Uh, and now their emotions will no longer be affected either. And we put the bookcase and back. And then you can sneak out of the school and back to the hotel. And we put the bookcase yes. back. Yeah, put the bookcase back. Put the book back on the shelf. Or take it with you. Uh, it does have do, we, the, do, we, do we take the magic yes. book? I want to study it. You have the magic book, mm -hmm. but if uh, there's a chance that if you it open might just it, it fall would apart. engage that stupid spell again. Oh, true. I cool. Wait, could I dis could I dispel that leash? Like specifically that leash? Could I identify that and dispel it? Is that a thing? Um, dispel magic is you have to roll if it's higher than a level three spell, and the roll is what. Uh, so Ten the, plus these, the level the, of the spell you're trying to dispel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and roll it. And I make it using my spell casting, which is plus four. So one sec. Are there any things that I can do to buff up this for a dispel? I'm curious. Yeah. I don't think so. An ability check? Does it, it, guidance it help ability check? An ability somewhere? check, and I think guidance does. So guidance. Oh, yeah, snaps can guide you. Let me just make sure. Ability check, yeah. Ability How about check, that? Yes. How about that? That's really good. Being able to buff up dispels is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, and that is that. And that is... Okay, I might need to use more than one dispel. Uh, because that was a... Four, six, seven. That was a... Seven. <laughs> Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. <laughs> Yeah, so no, I'm gonna have to, I'm not going to come out with an 11. Um, 
But I guess you can take the book and continue to try to dispel it over yeah. the, until you are able to roll the 19 required. Gotcha. So, yeah. You'll try periodically to dispel it, and once you successfully dispel it, you can open the book, and it's essentially 100 uh, gold pieces worth of that fancy-ass paper that wizards require. Oh, oh sick. Yeah. Nice. With five sheets used. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, with five sheets used? Ooh, hold up. Well, the, the, the five, five used that's pieces are of paper. The, the, the bits that we assembled. The to... spell. The yeah. puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So those yeah, can't be used. It's for... essentially a hundred gold but... piece worth of that fancy paper. Yeah. So I ended up having to use the spell four times. So just yeah. what that's worth. Uh, so, so uh, still need somebody to tell me what I'm writing for the next session. Am I writing ground travel stopping in towns or ground travel uh, accelerated skipping over shit so that we can get back to town? Um, I think we need to weigh that in with Sarah. Can we give you the answer to that in message yeah, form at table. some point? <laughs> yes, yeah. I will send a message in breakfast table chat asking for a decision. Perfect. Cool beans, because I know Rasa does not do want play... to get home. Yeah. Uh, when do we play um, yeah, uh, Diebrook again? Snaps. Week after next, so um, the, seventh like the 7th of September, unless unless there's any. Okay, so I only have two weeks. Cool. Oh, okay, I will put a message Snaps. in breakfast table we'll chat. Probably want to room with Maev tonight. Okay, I'll bring it up at the next session. And are we still recording so that the person who writes the recap uh, will have all of these bits of information for what, how we ended the session? I am, in fact, yep. still recording. I have not stopped. Fabulous. Wonderful. So hopefully Snaps will be able to cobble together the end of the activity, the talking to Emuriel, the getting out of the school, and getting back to the hotel where sparring will take place at the beginning of the next session. Yay. Alrighty. Hooray. Uh, I guess. Night, everybody. Goodbye, YouTube. Bye, -bye. Good night. Bye, YouTube. Bye. Bye.